right? Yes. So, Mr. Strudo, do I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to approve the August 3rd, 2020 regular session meetings as amended. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second, <laughs> Mr. O'Leary, via lip reading. So um, I have a motion by Mr. Studo, a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Unmute. Saying aye, I think. Aye, aye. <laughs> Mr. Studo. Aye. And Manu Pelli is aye. And then I think we have executive session yep. as well, Mr. Studo. Madam Chair, I move to approve the August 3rd, 2020 executive session minutes as written. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Studo, a second by <clears throat> Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, <clears throat> Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. And Manu Pelli is I. Next order of business is the board member reports. Mr. O'Leary. I don't have any routine, anything to report in relation to my liaison assignments to this point, but I, I would like to just make some <clears throat> observations and comments. I mean, at the last meeting, I suggested that uh, people should or encourage residents to take advantage of, you know, mail-in ballots and uh, to keep themselves safe in this time of COVID and, and all the rest. But uh, I don't know if I'm comfortable with the advice and encouragement that I gave the people at the last meeting uh, in light of what's transpired over the last uh, couple of weeks here. <clears throat> um, you know, we, we, we've been telling our kids and we see advertisements and all the rest, you know, if you see something, say something. Well, I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm seeing something here that, uh, that doesn't sit very well. You know, we have um, the administration, the federal administration, um, the president, uh, his postmaster general, you know, dismantling the operations of the postal facility, which is going to uh, curtail and inhibit people's ability to safely exercise their right to vote, it's, it's of concern. So certainly it's of concern. And again, we're hearing it you know, through the news <clears throat> and we're seeing that uh, some congressional leaders are looking to take some action to, to address the situation. And we saw a tad bit of backpedaling uh, tonight, I guess, from the president on it. But uh, the fact still remains that you know, we have a postmaster general that's uh, heavily invested in uh, companies and industries that, uh, that compete directly with the Postal Service. Uh, we have uh, a president who has openly stated that he doesn't want to see or encourage or allow or uh, discourage um, mail-in ballot, uh, voting ballots. Um, and as a result is withholding funding from the Postal Service uh, to de deliver those ballots you know, to the local clerks and have, make sure that encourage that people are, you know, votes are counted on a timely basis. Uh, but in addition to that, you know, the actions are having a significant impact already on regular citizens outside of the voting, outside of the political arena here, you know, where uh, you know, monthly checks are not being uh, delivered on a timely basis you know, for uh, retirees. Uh, prescription drugs are being delayed. Um, reimbursements for prescriptions of people laying out uh, thousands of dollars and then seeking reimbursement for insurance companies to pay for medications are being delayed. I just saw one of the news tonight at 6.30 News here, National News, where uh, the, this elderly gentleman has $11,000 outstanding on his credit cards. It normally takes six days to get reimbursed, is now uh, several weeks and has the $11,000 outstanding on his credit card debt in order to pay for medications for his wife. This is outrageous. And as I said, if you see something, we should say something. 
and you know over the last several weeks and months I've been raising some issues in relation to what we're seeing at the national level how it's trickling down and having an effect at the local level and I don't know I just think it's important that we as local public elected officials if we see something we should say something and we should say something to our other elected officials at higher levels, the state legislature, the governor, <clears throat> our elected congressional delegation and uh, senatorial people, that, you know, this is outrageous, it's unacceptable, and it shouldn't be occurring. You know, I don't care how people vote. It doesn't matter to me. You know, I don't care if someone's vote offsets my vote. I want them to be able to participate and I want them to be able to participate safely. These are not normal times. And I think we all need to recognize that and we need to say something and say it to the people that can help it resonate all the way up to the White House. You know, we need to say something. Again, it could be under the signature of the chair, but it should be, you know, I haven't heard anything from our, our state legislators. I haven't heard anything from Representative Jones or Senator Tarr. Uh, Governor Baker has been a vocal critic, you know, of the, uh, of the of the president, but I haven't heard anything in relation to the postal facility thing here. Um, you know, I don't care if we write a letter to the Senate president and the Speaker of the House, uh, but we need to say something. This is unacceptable. And we can't sit, sit here idly, say, at least I can't, and say nothing. And you know, people can accuse me of being partisan. I don't care if this was President Obama. You'd be hearing the same thing right. from me. You know, you'd be hearing the same thing. This is not right. And again, the, the residual effects of, of and impacts on people's lives are significant. So we need to say something. So you know? Mr. O'Leary, do you, are you, what are you thinking of in the format of a resolve? Because when it comes to my return, I was gonna ask something very similar about what the US Census Bureau is doing. So do you have, by way of a resolve that we, uh, as a board, if the majority agrees, it, notify the congressional delegation to do whatever it can in its power to um, take action against the, um, I guess, transitioning or whatever the US Postal Service is doing. Because we have all asked people to vote uh, repeatedly by mail, thinking well, that was they, the, they, they've cut back on overtime they curtailed the hours at the postal service they're removing mailboxes it's absurd you know so and again so let me just I'm, looking for, some, I'm looking for someone else and rather than yeah. me you know I, i'm voicing my opinion here but i'd like sure. to have someone else join in and offer a statement you know offer something mm -hmm. um, so that, that we could rally around here and agree upon you know, that what's happening isn't acceptable. I don't care what your politics are. It's not right. It shouldn't be happening. But you know, it is. It's like we're almost living in a third world country here now. I have never seen anything like this in my lifetime. And again, I've been as political as anybody else and involved politically as anybody else. You know, nationally on down to the local levels here. And I have never seen anything like this maybe it was hidden before but i've never seen it and i've never seen it so blatantly you know orchestrated in the, in the public eye so in, we can't sit idly by and accept this as being normal behavior and acceptable behavior because it isn't it affects everybody i don't care what your persuasions are well, let me just Please. call the membership mr o'lear i'm sorry for interrupting no that's go ahead i'm sorry are i'm you, rambling on do you have anything else for your that you were considering raising at this point too because i'll pull the membership to see if there is an interest by a consensus vote to sending a message with regard to to, to this to do whatever that i would suggest to do whatever it is in their authority and power and legislative ability to curtail those um uh actions that well, are gonna... Again, to me, this also dovetails with, I mean, obviously we're gonna see a, a significant influx and already have, I spoke with the, the clerk uh, a couple of weeks ago, you know, there's been a significant influx of, of uh, response to the mail-in voting. It will, she's had thousands of applications, you know, which sort of dovetails with the resources that we need to commit here locally to ensure that these get 
handled on a timely basis. I mean, I know my son's application went in almost, you know, 12 days ago, and we still haven't seen a ballot, you know, but I don't know what is causing that. I want to make sure that she has the necessary resources um, available to, to address a local constituency. So the clerk know. is, I think the clerk is. No, I know, but so, so to me, this all dovetails together here. Sure. Because, uh, sure. So, so is it by way of a resolve that you want to send a, a resolve? A, um, we can act on a resolve at this point, and then we would send a letter or something of that nature? I'd, I'd be happy with any type of action that we take as a board. Okay, so let me just pull the members to see. I mean, I know your position and I know um, my position. Mr. Walner? I, I would just, you know, um, it is disturbing. I'm just thinking today how insidious it feels <laughs> here in the news. Um, <clears throat> and I, I would have an easier time if someone had drafted up a letter or because I would want to think about it. And, and I know the time is everything. So I realize when I say that, that's really not very fair. Um, but there's, a, I just want to know the full details because I haven't studied this as much as I should, but it does feel really, it feels, you know, diabolical almost. And, and so, you know, if you're just saying on a high order without getting details, anything that gets in the way of our ability to be able to, to vote is I'm totally against. Anything that is being done now to stop us in a safe, especially in a pandemic from being able to vote, I am totally against. So I'm very clear about that. Getting into details about OT and all the other stuff, it makes sense, but I just haven't studied it. So I'm not, I'm not uh, opposed to that. I just have to think it through before I'd absolutely say, I want to get down to that level at this point. Okay. That's just my first, first blush opinion. Okay. Um, so not, so n on the fence right now is essentially it. Well, again, if the main message is we want to do everything we can to ensure that people can vote and participate, and that means expanding ways for them to be able to do that, I'm all for that. And anything, any efforts that are being taken to stop that, um, or to interfere with it, I am also against, I'm against that happening. Uh, <laughs> You know, it's just a matter of how, how much detail do you want your uh, Again, I'm not suggesting we can get into the, you know, the details of the, of the overtime cut and all the rest. You know, you know, maintain the status quo and give them the resources necessary to allow people to vote safely and on a timely basis. I'm, I'm good with that kind of statement. Okay. Mrs. Gonzalez? Yeah, so, you know, I haven't had time to research this. I've heard blurbs about it. Um, I'm not willing to sign anything until I absolutely understand the whole situation. Um, I do know that on July 29th, the Trump administration gave $10 billion in emergency coronavirus relief funding to the post office. I do know that the post office is $78 billion in debt from 2007 to 2019. I mean, there's things going on with the post office um, that they're not self-sustaining right now. So um, there's con conspiracy theories that I don't know are, are true. So I'm not willing to sign something saying okay, that they so are. You would be opposed to the resolve. Yeah. The resolve. Okay, Mr. Studo. Um, at this time, I agree with Mr. Walner and Mrs. Gonzalez. Uh, I actually have read a good amount and I still, it seems like, every article ends with what if and we still have to verify so if people digging pretty hard at the national level haven't been able to fully understand if this is more i don't want to use the word normal as these days nothing is normal but if this is more of something that is just coincidental or more of are we really trying to rip mailboxes from the ground so i i, I agree with mr walner's but like i anything to make voting easier I think one of the first things I ever said is that, you know, and I posted on Facebook for select board is that the right to vote to me is more important than any other right you pretty much have. Cause without that, you really don't have much, but right now I, I just signing off on something that like this, I, I don't feel right. Also, I just want to add one thing again, I'm new to this, but it was always my understanding that, especially at the local level, we try to do what's best and represent our constituencies. And maybe just because of the people I talk to, I've not heard one person 
bring this up to me and I try to keep my pulse with a couple people that know a lot more people than I do in North Reading weekly. And this just doesn't, hasn't come up. Maybe it's just not, maybe we as the board need to make people aware. It just, as a right now, I'm not comfortable signing off on something that not one person that I know voted for me has ever, has brought up to me yet. So I'm in that, I'm in that camp. All right. I had, so I had somebody as recently as today yeah. say to me that they were wanting to vote by mail and are reluctant to send in the application because of what's occurring and the rhetoric that's taking place and the funding and all the rest that goes along with it. This has nothing to do with the deficit of the postal service right now because you know the way that that was originally designed it was self-sustaining and all the rest and then the resources have been taken and that's for another day. Anyway, yeah. but somebody as recently as today <laughs> said to me that they are reluctant now to send in the application for mail-in voting thing because they're not sure it's going to get there they're not sure it's going to get counted and they were concerned that they would want it to go in and not have to go in and vote in person and now they don't have the confidence level mm. that their vote is going to be counted and the ballot's going to be delivered you know and mr earlier if we wrote if we put this together right just i mean and you and you know i'm not trying to say you're old but a little older than me so you've seen more than me but i even see that let's say we got something like this on paper and forwarded it do we really believe at this level that at the federal level with the slow crawl that both sides are working at right now, that that person you spoke to is going to feel any more comfortable because we put something in writing? Because if we have that kind of power, I, I like I have all kinds of resolutions that I like to propose. I, and I'm, I'm more than happy to entertain those resolutions because I believe the power does emanate from the people down here at the local level up, not from the top down, but from the bottom up. And for years, I've been advocating. Let's advocate from the grassroots, local level up. We need to be heard. We've been elected to look out for our constituents' interests here. And if this isn't in our interest, I don't know what is. Oh, and I again, agree. I'm just I'm, even if it's symbolic. You know, I agree. I'm and, just saying specific you know, that so, I so feel again, that like I'm not looking to, to dig into the weeds yeah. necessarily. As but well. how do we make that person feel better? So when other people come, how do we make that person who we can't really look in the eye and say that anything we do right now, even though I, I can, believe what you're saying, how do we get that person to feel more comfortable at the local level? I don't know that we can get listen, them to feel more can, comfortable listen, in the next we, two weeks. You have a, we you have, have a primary a September 1st. I don't know that we can make these people feel comfortable right. in the next few weeks, but they can feel comfortable with the fact that their local elected officials are aware as to what's going on, the impact that the federal government is having on down here at the local level, again, not just votes, but again, prescription drugs, checks, monthly checks, pension checks, reimbursement checks, all the rest that people have to sustain themselves with are being impacted here, and that they can at least recognize that we understand that we're representing their interest and we're sending the message up through the chain of command here up to the local legislature, the state legislature, the governor, and then to our, our federal officials. So there's the comfort level. Is it going to erase the concern for the September 1st primary? Probably not. Probably not. But people shouldn't have to make these types of choices when the laws are in place that allow them to exercise their right to vote safely at home. And now things are being done to impede that process. We should be saying something. So you have any resolutions? I'll be happy to listen to any and all of them because it's important. I believe we have a voice here. And the voices at the local level, just as people are out in the streets now protesting, are being heard. But if you look, sit here silently and you see something and you say nothing, nothing's being heard. As I said, I started off, see something, say something, right? Mm -hmm. so, That's my point. So Larry, listen, because we do have to move on. I think I'm, I'm in full support of uh, pre prepared resolve to be sent to the congressional, our, our, uh, you know, congressional, state and federal, state, state and federal. State and federal. I get, again, um, I, I need to hear from Representative Jones. I need to hear yeah, from Senator but, Tarr. I need to but, hear from the governor. I need to hear from uh, the Senate president, the Speaker of the House. Okay, Gary, let's put something together for the board to consider. And the, quite frankly, I'm in full support. We don't need any more red flags that we're ignoring here. It's pretty blatant. They're not even red flags. They're blatant things that are being done here. But we don't, we, the other three members, we don't have a majority to move forward on it at this moment. So how about it? I, I, I don't disagree. That's not what I heard from Mr. Waller. Something oh, it sounds like broad based and rather than specific, he was in support of. 
It sounds like you wanted to study this, study this a little bit more and you know look into it a little bit more, not having read anything. So I don't want to get into a debate on it. And we can we can at the book at the end of the meeting when we talk about our old and new business get into it a little bit more because we yeah. do have to move on. Um, but I didn't hear that from Mr. Walner. And I don't think I did I misunderstand well, your comment, Mr. Walner? I was, I was trying to say big picture. You know, I think we're all philosophically, nothing should stand in the way of voting. And there's nothing wrong with delivering that message. That's a great message to deliver. And then what I was saying, but if we start getting into like the specifics I'm hearing, it's really hard for me to address that because I don't understand them fully yet. But I mean, the main intent is encouraging people to vote, doing it safely, and anything that gets in that way, philosophically, conceptually, is bad news. And you know, Brad Jones and you know, the people that are above us they know what that means they, they understand what that means i mean well, we can be more specific I guess, Mr. Waller, I guess what i need to know right now is i, I think what i'm hearing is not i, I think mr o'leary wants to send a resolve so yeah, i'm fine with drafting it up I, i'm fine with drafting that up and, okay. and then considering it at another meeting in other words i, I would be happy to have mr walner draft it up and i'll be in support of it <laughs> oh truly Okay, no, so why don't we do this? Why don't we let Mr. Walner draft something and then we'll revisit it at our next meeting because the okay. fact of the matter is that the Inspector General is going to be testifying, the, excuse me, the Postmaster General is going to be called to testify anyway. So hopefully there'll be action taken, legislative action taken, they're being called back in. And this is, you know, current news story and current information. So um, hopefully that it, it, they will be taking uh, a strong stance on it to you know avoid the impact now that's happening they're actually taking mailboxes off of sidewalks and things like that right now in the town of brookline they had a so a, a rack truck with four mailboxes in it so that's, i don't think brookline, Massachusetts. i think it's beyond warning flags at this point oh, it, it's, it's it's absurd and for us done, to not be able so. to say anything all right all right let's not talk over one another because god bless ellie i don't know how she's recording all this but <laughs> let's do one at a time mr o'leary um right now we don't have i don't think we have we'll have to have something drawn up and then we'll take a look at that and then and then hopefully we won't need it uh, actually uh, and next meeting is the 31st of august one day before the primary so I'm all set with the inaction that the board is going to take, if that's the, which is the majority. I, well, I mean, there's two levels here, right? There's the, there's a September one, but then there's a November one. And I think there's a tremendous amount of focus on how this is going to affect the national election. So if you're saying to the town right now, don't trust the mail for the September one, and by the way, I put my mail in today, so I guess I'm too late. <laughs> um, that's one thing, but I mean, you know, the whole November election is a whole nother level of, of uh, seriousness. And that's, that to me is, I, I think this, this current election is, is, I mean, we can tell people not to fill them out and to come in live. And that makes sense because there is question marks, but the November one is really what we're aiming for to have an impact, to be honest. Um, all right. So, it, and I don't, I don't think it's explicitly related just to the primary either, Mr. O'Leary. No, I think it's but timing I think is the serious impact that it has, just, not just on the elective process, but on people's daily lives and yeah. things like that is pretty, is, is a pretty significant basis for us to at least move forward with the resolve. And yeah. I do I do, I do think that's important. So let's have Mr. Walton draw something up. Everyone can, you know, maybe give through, through the, through the TA, give your comment about what you think should be in there to the TA and he can help Mr. Walner with that. If that's all right with you, Mr. Gilberto. But um, thank you, Mr. O'Leary. I think that's a great, it was an important point, a po very important point to, for, to be raised this evening. Um, Mr. Walner. How about you? Let's hear some board board reports from you. Uh, <laughs> you have a, a new assignment, so <laughs> that's my homework. Uh, Writer for the board. That's your homework. I'll yes. Don't worry, we'll give you plenty of comments for it <laughs> through through Mr. Gilberto. <laughs> Very well. 
I'm um, telling everyone through Mr. Gilberto, because if we combine comments and things, it could be a quorum, and we don't want to do that outside of open meeting. Okay. And I think everyone has pretty well expressed their position on it. So yeah. hopefully okay. we'll go through Mr. Gilberto on it. Okay. Uh, I'm sure it won't get published. Um, <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Oh, so board reports. The um, the uh, the I've been talking about how we've been working on the contract for the AARP Age Friendly Initiative. Uh, internally, we are satisfied that we have done everything we can with UMass Gerontology Group, and I think it's right now sitting at Michael Michael's uh, desk to uh, review and go over. So uh, we feel like we have a really good relationship with them. Really. And again, it comes down to where is North Reading now when it comes to age-friendly issues? Uh, what do we as a town want to be and what does AARP say? And really, it's the three gaps. You know, like what's the gap between those and how can we solidify those? So I'm feeling good about that. Um, I was, we were going to have an LUC meeting uh, last, uh, this week, wait a minute, when we're going to have it, last week, um, to go over that $45,000 grant that came in kind of out of the, uh, out of the woodwork. Um, uh, we didn't get to have that. It was on our docket for today. It's now off of the docket for today, but I, my understanding is Michael is going to be on the next board meeting. So Phil Hertz is ready to present to us and tell us the update on that bike trail. And to me, it's largely very good news. And, you know, the extra 45,000 is great as well. Um, and I think that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Waller. Mr. Studo? Um, I have that, uh, I'd just like to thank everyone that came out um, for, I mean, you were there, for Mrs. Gonzalez and some others events. I think it was nice. What I loved about it is that the representation of it, I mean, who calls the home phone? The representation of it from older, younger, all political persuasions, it was great to see. It was like, it was awesome. Like, I mean, and that is like, to me, not only was it great that we were supporting what I think is the cornerstone of any community, you know, the public safety, because without that bedrock, it's really hard to have everything else. But I love that it didn't really, it just showed that just because you think about something one way doesn't mean you can't agree with someone in another way that just is important. And that, and that was just great to see, because I feel like all you ever hear in, in the media is, oh, Vincenzo likes green, and Mr. O'Leary likes blue and Kate likes black, so they can never be in the same room together. And, they, and that's just not the case. So I just felt that it was my first experience of a, a town-wide kind of event like that that wasn't like government related, more like just citizens related. And it was just, it was something great to see. And, you know, I, I got, um, you know, it just told me a lot about this community that I already assumed, but it was just kind of solidified. So um, that's all I have. Uh, some of the other... When it comes to the liaison things, a few of the summer's kind of slow. So the ZBA really has been not doing anything too big. So I really don't have any reports yet, but hopefully that will change soon. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stroh. Mrs. Gonzalez. Um, yeah, so um, as liaison to the community impact team, they are having a free mass to the community event um, in collaboration with the North Reading Police and Fire, um, the Human Services and COVID-19 Response Team, and the Community Impact Team. They're providing free disposable masks to the community via a safe drive-in pickup on Saturday, August 22nd from 9 to 10.30 for residents 60 and over, as well as those with medical challenges. Um, and then from 11 to 1, anyone else can come. Um, it will be at the North Reading Middle High School. Um, and you basically, I guess you're going to go up to the main entrance and then it, it seems to me you're going to go around the, the circle there. Mr. Gilberto is really <laughs> shaking his head, so I think that's right. And they'll be handed out to you. Um, and also who helped with that was um, Stop and Shop um, Alliance, Private Wealth, Converse, Friends of the Elder Services, 
and Moynihan Lumber were all supporting are all supporting this event. So I think it's an excellent thing for people to go out and and if you need masks to get them free. Um, and I'd like to thank Mr. Studo for those words. Um, I have a lot of people to thank for what I thought was just an amazing event that was not political, that had all realms of people, like he said, um, and just coming together, having fun, and supporting our, our local police department um, who really need that little boost. So um, I wanna thank Lena Simone, Peter Ricola, and Annette Gentile who, who did this with me. Um, and I wanna thank my colleagues, Kate Manupelli and Vincenzo Studo, who came and stood right beside me and, and cheered too. Um, thank you for taking the time to do that. Um, the CR Signs made a beautiful banner that they would not take any money for, thanking the local North Reading Police Department. Jeff Yule made a, a video, Al Pereira sent the drone out. Um, just so many people pulled together. But what I wanna make sure everybody knows also is to go on to the Support the Blue Facebook page because we do still have signs. We just got a whole new order in. And if you wanna sign for your yard thanking the local police department, please reach out to us and we will drop one off to you free of charge. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I, I thought that was a such a well organized event, so well attended. It was it was great. It was something great. Nice and hot weather, so the weather <laughs> held out. So it was a good good evening to be able to stand out and thank them. Um, so well done, Mrs. Gonzalez. And I too have a resolve that I'd like the board to consider, and this relates to the tinkering of the deadline for the. Um, data collection on the census, the US census, the federal census. Um, and I think that in the pandemic and with everything that's going on, the hastening of the, the shortening of the deadline, I think is a, another, it's, it's beyond a red flag, it's intentionally done to disenfranchise uh, people and it's intentionally done to redirect resources. So the whole purpose of the census, which we do have our clerk on and she she always harps on us to fill out the census and make sure we fill it out. She just did it again with me last week when I came stopped by to sign something on behalf of the board. But the federal census taker did show up at our house. So she'll be happy to know that. My kid. Yes. But in any event, there um the applications are also online for the federal census, but they decided arbitrarily to shorten the data collection deadline for a month and again like mr o'leary said you know we we have to do something we have to when we see something we have to say something and these aren't even you know questionable they're they're obvious red flags and blatant um interventions that are unacceptable so my thought would be that we issue a resolve to our congressional delegation to do whatever they can in their power to um and to see to it that the deadline isn't just kept to where it should be but that let it let's put it 30 days after that due to the owing oh, to the pandemic and the upheaval that people have been through um and how does it affect us it affects every community it affects everybody that needs to be able to be counted in and it affects us in terms of resources and everything else and i do think um, that as a board, we should be doing these types of actions. No, we don't, we can't legislate. We can't give an issue an executive order, but we can come together as a board, band together as a board, like Mr. <coughs> O'Leary suggested for what's going on with the post office and, and like I'm suggesting with what's going on with the census and band together as a board and, and send a send a communication that says this is we find this unacceptable and we want you to do whatever you can in your power to take some action do whatever you possibly can and have our voices heard on these matters too so that would be my thought and owing to the fact that we're um going to consider uh, a writing i would 
be happy to write something up for the board to consider with regards to that. However, the deadline, they're trying to cut the deadline off to September 31st. That's still a little bit of time. We, can, we could send something by the next meeting if the board was so inclined to consider that. So I don't know what your thoughts are. So let me just pull the, pull the members on that. Ms. Trollier, what's your thought on that? Hooray for you, absolutely. Okay, Mr. Walner. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm good with that. It's, yeah, I'm good with that. Mrs. Gonzalez. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll read whatever you need to draft up. And... Okay, Mr. Studo. That was my question. Do we just, I, I think it's great. Uh, I agree. Um, too much is, that's how things slip between the cracks, so to speak. Um, but is it something, if we vote yes, do we, um, maybe I just don't know, do it just get drafted like now or later? Like, how, how does that work? That's just my question. Um, I already have a letter drafted, so. Uh, oh, okay, that's <laughs> my question. I didn't know if it would just, okay. I, I have a five page letter drafted. I'll, I'll make five it pages. a one pager, but if the board is so inclined, if, if by a, a, a majority consensus that you'd allow me with working with Mr. Gilberto to, to um, prepare and sign the letter on behalf of the board, just l ask in the delegation, do whatever you can in your power to see to it that that deadline isn't shortened and that it's actually extended given the pandemic, then you know whatever that whatever that whoever that reaches who can do something about it if they can or they can't at least we've been heard on that so i'm happy to draw that up and if i think if you wanted to uh someone wanted to move to vote to allow that we can at least get that one done so Soon. move madam chair great i have a motion by mr o'leary to allow the chair working with the t town administrator to uh uh, prepare a, a letter to the congressional delegation asking the delegation to do whatever it can in its authority to extend the data collection deadline versus shortening it. Do I have a second? Second. I have a, a second by Mr. Walner. Any further discussion? Yeah, um, would, I, would I be able to review that before it? Sure. Okay, I'd like to. Sure. So, would you want to uh, vote on that this evening to the members? Uh, we have a motion on the floor and a second. I can't vote on something I don't see and haven't read. Okay. I feel comfortable well, with it. Not we're, that gonna, we're gonna call the vote and that's an understandable explanation, Mrs. Gonzalez. Mr. I'm, I'm not the least bit uncomfortable with the subject matter and your resolve. So however you put it into words, I'm fine with it. Okay, so I'm gonna, Take the vote then. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Pending review. So that's a no. We'll take <laughs> it as a no and we understand why. It's okay. Mr. Studo. Aye. And, chair, and the chair is an aye. So we'll get that together and sent out. All right. Um, just... One more thing by Mr. Walner. Yeah, it just because it, 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 I think what uh, Mr. Sudo said was right is that you can be blue and also be black and you can be red and also be yellow. Um, I would like to think, uh, you know, I helped organize that summit and the people that were at the summit, the Racial Justice Summit, they we had we had two representatives from the police department and they are continuing to engage with the people who are raising up racial issues. So um we we have been you know to order the signs you have to order a dozen at a time we have people who have are into their third sign being pulled off of their land up front and so i would really ask people like just because you put up a black lives matter sign doesn't mean you're anti-police and just because you put up a police sign doesn't mean you're anti-black lives matter but rich we can't hear you yeah and you we, we need to hear this point yeah no, we can't hear you. Someone sabotaged you. Raise your volume. Raise your volume. Can you, can you? Right as close as I can get it. There you go. There you go. Oh. All right. Weird. Um, anyways, what I was saying is that, um, sorry, you have to look at my chin. <laughs> um, 
What I was saying is, I don't know how much you missed of this, but what I was saying is you can be supporting the police and also supporting Black Lives Matter. And in the okay. racial summit, we have representatives from the police department, we have representatives from the kids <laughs> at the schools, and we have adults who are trying to take action. We can all live together to make this happen because I think we, we have a really good town, right? I think we have a really good town. So let's not be taking the Black Lives Matter sign. I, we know people who are in three weeks, they've had three signs already taken from the property. And the way we know that is that they're coming back to us because we order them by the dozen. And you know, some people are, you know, it's two times their signs have disappeared. So let's just, let's just try to respect each other. Let's leave all the signs alone and let people just express what they want. And if you, if you really feel strongly, get involved with these organizations get involved and learn something and elevate our entire community as opposed to taking hostile steps. That's all I can really say about that. Thank Amen, you. Mr. Walner. Mrs. Gonzalez has something else to add. I you know, we do have a section at the end. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna get to the business on the agenda, oh, but go ahead. Go ahead, Mrs. Gonzalez. I would just like to say, amen, amen, amen to that. Um, <laughs> nobody has any right to take anybody's sign or property or anything on their property. You have no right, whether you agree or disagree, leave it alone. Um, and yes, you can support the police and you can still support anti-racism. You can support Black Lives Matter. You can still support the police. Why this is a delay, although we were protested by, by 12, um, BLM people at our event. Um, so conversation, yeah, needs to happen, needs to happen. So thank you for that. Okay, well, I'll just, I will take the last word here. I, I thought that the individuals that were there from the Black Lives Movement that were holding signs up, I don't think they were protesting. I, there was only one individual who was trying to get it, you know, into people's faces and recording and wishing people that they hope they got COVID. But I think that that type of an individual is an aberration in these, these types of things that are important to the community. And the anti-racism is obviously as important to the community as it is for us to show our support for our first responders and our police. And I agree with Mr. Walner and Mrs. Gonzalez. Those are not two inconsistent messages. I mean, we're, you know, let's be pro a progressive, uh, I know that seem, sometimes seems to be a dirty word, but let's be a progressive community here and try to hear individuals' viewpoints. And that's, a, that's the way you're going to elevate everything, elevate the dialogue, you know, and, and when someone's going around trying to harass people and take their pictures, those people that were there, we don't care about our pictures being taken. We're there, we're standing on the line saying, thank you. I did not think that there was, other than that one individual wishing people got COVID, the only other people there I thought were peacefully standing there with signs. I don't think that they were in anyone's faces. I, I, didn't, actually, I didn't actually stay for the whole thing, but I thought, I thought it was a respectful um, group of people that were holding their signs. I, I understand it. It wasn't something done at the anti-racism. I also attended that entire rally and I didn't see anyone doing that to and at that rally, nor would I hope anyone would be in, be in each other's faces. But as these things go, sometimes you, there are individuals that do, do, that do strange things. So I thought it was very peaceful. I thought it was, like you said, there was a, it was a great energy. People were very positive overall. People were very positive. So it was good to see that. It was good to see that support. Madam Chair, if I might just, uh, I, I apologize for not being available that night. I was out of town, my wife and I, uh, and I, I agree wholeheartedly that, you know, Black Lives Matter and uh, supporting the local police, Blue Lives Matter and All Lives Matter, you know, can consistently can uh, peacefully coexist for sure. Uh, you know, so that, you know, unfortunately we were out of town and not able to, uh, to, uh, to be present, you know, but uh, there isn't a night that my wife and I don't go to bed and pray for the uh, uh, safety of our law enforcement people, because again, our son is a Boston police officer. Um, he's uh, stationed in the Roxbury district. He's there truly seven days a week. 
because he's forced into overtime and uh, forced into the details and uh, not by choice. Uh, and it's essential that they're there. And, uh, you know, so that, you know, all lives matter as long as everyone has been treated the same. And, you know, this is where the consistency and uh, where people can, can coalesce around things. And while, you know, there has been some injustices, and certainly some injustices over the you know, past centuries, never mind past decades, uh, that need to be addressed, uh, it is important to uh, let our first responders and police department know that, you know, that we do appreciate them and we appreciate the, their efforts and they're coming to work every day and putting their lives on the line. And, uh, you know, so I think, you know, the, the, uh, the group that got together, you know, uh, kudos to, to all of you who pulled that off and pulled it together. And I'm sure the local police department, you know, appreciated it very much. I certainly appreciate it. And, uh, and again, uh, as I said, you know, I think that, uh, there's room for everybody's opinion here. And people should respect other people's properties and opinions and allow them to voice them uh, peacefully, whether it be through signs or standing on the street corners or, or voting um, without fear of being harassed or damage being done to their property or any type of destruction. So um, again, congratulations for the event that, that occurred. Sorry we weren't able to be there, um, but uh, Obviously, I think the local police department knows that they have my full support because I've been supportive over the last uh, 30 years as a member of this board. So, uh, again, I think it's a, a wonderful thing that our community, the Hornets Against Hate, people who are out there uh, supporting our, our first responders and law enforcement people, this is all a wonderful thing. So, uh, thank you. Thank you for those words. Okay, I think we have talked enough, and I think it's time for public comment. <laughs> Let's hear from members of the public who would like to comment. So we have, um, I have, see Mr. Yule, Mr. Yes. Yule, Jeff Yule. Yes, thank you, thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes. Good, good. Um, uh, first of all, uh, Leanne uh, and uh, uh, the her supporters did a really spectacular job, as we all recognize. I'm a little bit confused on something here uh, that has uh, occurred uh, since, uh, I guess, June now, uh, with with the uh, opponents against hate and the Black Lives uh, Matter, and relating to the Board of Selectmen. So I've listened to the uh, meetings, and and uh, coming into this meeting, I was under the impression that. Uh, uh, Mr. Walner was doing this on his own time, uh, which implied that it had nothing to do with the Board of Selectmen. Okay, and and now I'm hearing tonight that it has everything to do with the Board of Selectmen uh, relative to town government. So you know, I uh, so it's confusing to me uh, in, in that regard. It's confusing to a lot of people uh, in 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 the community. Now, because uh, I was going to say that uh, uh, that you know, the select board members may have opinions on many, many subjects uh, and activities, and they may participate in uh, them by supporting them. But I always say, remember that as uh, yeah, you're all figureheads of the of the community, and you, you should be reflecting the town's uh, values. Um, when I heard before that. Uh, um, Mr. Walner was uh, uh, doing something, he was doing this on his own personal time. S select uh, members of the uh, select board, really it's a 24 hour, 365 day responsibility because you are representing the town regardless of what you are doing. Um, and you always have to be cognizant of of it because you don't know who's going to challenge you on something at any given moment. Uh, so I, I have some some questions. Okay, uh, in in what official capacity? I'm going to go through a few questions that I have. In what official capacity is Rich Walner representing the town with Black Lives Matter, Hornets Against Hate, and the North Reading Youth for Anti-Racism? Now none of these are recognized town committees. Uh, the other one is. Ms. Hill, let me let me just answer your question because I'm I don't think there should be any confusion on your part. We've had a um, a couple of presentations from 
the um, black, uh, the, it's, it's the uh, North Reading Youth Against Racism a group. And we've, as a board, wholeheartedly and unanimously offered our support, uh, encouraging them. And actually, Mr. Walner did volunteer to work as a liaison with that, uh, that group to, to help them. And, and I, I, for one, appreciate his service, but we all do things on our own time. This right now is on our own time and on our own equipment, and, and that's what we do. This is what we do. That is our service to the town. So he volunteered to take on yet another service in addition to all the liaison assignments, just like Mrs. Gonzalez just organized an event on her own time. That was all on her own time. And we were happy, a couple of the members of the select board were happy to come out and you heard another member wasn't available to come out and we were happy to come out to support the police at that event on her own time and on our own time. That's what we do. You know, you served. You know, all of this is on our own time. Well, but Mr. Walner got the unit the, the group got the unanimous, unanimous approval of the members of the board to move forward with their initiatives. And even the specific encouragement from me directly explaining that that's how our youth, that's how we got a youth services director. It started out as a grassroots organization. Those types of groups need the support of the select board to be able to move forward with their initiatives. And they need to have this forum to be able to move forward with their initiatives. So Mr. Walner is, yes, he yet again volunteered for another thing in addition to all of his other assignments. And we all said, go for it. Not only to him, but to the group. So that shouldn't be confusing. Madam Chair, can I ask Mr. Yule a question just to clarify, maybe he can clarify himself. I think Mr. Mr. Yule has a bunch of qu more questions. Okay. I hope that answers at least that question number one. I, 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 it, uh, when you're representing the town, I, I'm not sure I agree with you 100% uh, from your perspective. I know you're saying that this is all on your own time. Yes, it's all on our own time, but right now, doing with through zoom but if if you if you didn't weren't doing zoom you'd be at town hall representing the town and at that point uh, as an elected official i always looked at it i'm not representing me i'm representing the town and what the town is looking to have accomplished okay um so i think we have a difference of opinion uh just on let me, that uh, let me just quickly because you've, you've addressed me so what you have implied is that the only people i brought to the summit was was the three groups that are looking for racial justice. What you have ignored and what I have brought together was the police department, youth services, counseling of aging, and uh, I'm forgetting somebody. Oh, the CIT people. CIT. And so CIT. my goal, my goal was services. to bring, as what I said from the very beginning, Jeff, you have to let me finish. I said from the very beginning, is it's great that people want to write the board and just imagine we can pass the magic wand and make everything change, but it's not realistic. We are a town of volunteers. And what I try to do is get those people together to give them my experience of best practices of creating a group, but also to give them exposure to all the town entities that they needed to know so that they could be effective in, in making progress in their thing. I did two summits and then I, then I left it. So I've left it and I'm not, it's not that I'm not interested. And if they don't do one of the things I'm suggesting, I'm gonna come back in a month and try to challenge the town to take an implicit bias survey. But in the meantime, I was very much bringing these groups together and the feedback I got from everybody and they're continuing their efforts is that they are trying to work with the town so we have a cooperative experience and not people going off in different directions. That is the flavor of the month and doesn't have any traction because this needs traction. This is our community. We need to improve our community and we do need to wake up on a number of different fronts and uh, people, it's nobody's fault that they haven't woken up, but they need to wake up and this is a good time to do it. So I, I don't apologize for anything. Okay, I'm not asking you to apologize. I, I need, what do we need to wake up from? Okay, I think what 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 you're 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 pushing here, to be quite frank with you, is you're pushing that there were problems in this town that exist, all right, that you apparently have noticed. Okay, and yep. and you're you're pushing that, and other people, okay, are saying, yeah, you know, what happened in Minnesota happened in Minnesota. We have too many good people in North Reading, okay, that should not be tagged as people who are possibly racist, okay? And that's what's going on. The only thing that you've really accomplished so far is a form of division within the town, 
And hmm. that, that is concerning to me because you're seeing it uh, uh, throughout the town, okay? People are stealing Trump signs, people are stealing Black Lives Matter signs. And uh, so there's a lot of division that wasn't there before until the proliferation of the support for the BLM and the Hornets Against Hate, okay? The, the, the young kids, I understand, they're concerned about it. They, they, cre they created a young movement. They should do that on their own. That, I don't see that as your role in bringing in a group that is anti-police, which Black Lives Matter is. So I have a, don't, don't shake your head no. Okay? Mr. Mr. Yo, Mr. Waller, I have a question. Mr. Mr. Waller, Mr. Waller, Mr. Yule, we're not gonna, we, you've answered his question, Mr. Waller. Mr. Yule, if you don't okay. mind finishing up your public okay. comments. So I want, I want to know, I want to know what really was the purpose of this uh, summit, this uh, racial uh, summit that, that was put together. I mean, it was, it was put together not, not, not by technically the town, it was put together by a few individuals who are saying that there are things in this town that, that are inappropriate, okay? And it, it's nice to talk nice things, but I think what I'm seeing here is that you've given people future assignments, all right? At first, it was a voluntary thing that you were doing, okay? But now there are future uh, assignments, uh, such as implicit bias challenge for the town to take on, okay? I wanna know who's the racist people in the town? Do you have specific examples? That's the question. I'll ask the board that question. Who is it? Is it, is it uh, uh, Michael Gilberto? Is he a racist? Is there a okay. problem there? Mr. Yule, do, do, do you have any you other, do you have any other, do you have any other questions? Because we're, we're not going to give you a list of racist people. I know town. you're not, but my and I think point we're all is... going to tell you Mr. Gilberto isn't racist, and of I think of course not. Of course you not. Say that you know him personally. You missed the point. You missed on the board. So That's let's move you, on. You don't. You, the I, point. You, you you're not in favor of Mr. Walner working or the board members working with these groups, and I think we've heard that. Could you please okay. continue? Do you have anything else you want to add okay. for public comment? I I think. Uh, uh, what I'm what I'm hearing is a little disappointing because you're getting a different opinion and you're not open to it and that's very disappointing. There are a lot of people in town, as I said, who are very, very disappointed in the board. Okay, aligning themselves. There's a there's a conflict of interest. All right, question of supporting uh, defunding the police. Black Lives Matter believes in that. Okay, they believe in it very strongly. Now, what are we going to do when we come to contracts? Is somebody on the board going to say we're going to defund the police? People want to know that. I'm not, I'm not trying to, you I, know, I, cause trouble. I'm trying to give you a different perspective. I, I, Can I just add I, one thing, too, just to be, be, because Mr. Wall, I mean, if we're going to be honest here and have an honest conversation, Mr. Walner was shaking his head when Mr. Yule said um, they are anti police. I have been attacked ever since I had my event on Hornets on that site. I have been attacked by several people. Two or three of them were at the event protesting. You say they weren't protesting, but they were because they're telling me that I have no, had no business supporting the police right now because that's not what I should be doing. So I have been attacked by them, just mm -hmm. to say, just let's put it out there. But I guess my, my concern here is, is that the board is supporting an organization, Black Lives Matter and Hornets Against Hate through association, because they're, kind of, they're separate, I'm sure, all right? Uh, they're supporting people who actually mm -hmm. practice hate versus uh, preaching being against hate. So okay. I'll leave it at Mr. that. Yo, this board already supported the two, ratified two agreement, two contractual agreements. So that answers your question of whether this board is in support of defunding the police. We just sewed those agreements up working quite well with our exemplary police department and the board unanimously approved those contracts. So this isn't new, something new that we're gonna go and 
interrupt those contractual agreements that we we just voted in. We've just voted to ratify. I don't know when, Mr. Gilberto, but it was time not too long ago. My mind is blurry from COVID-19, but what's that, Mr. O'Leary? Madam Chair, can I make my comment? Yeah, so, so uh, to answer your question, wh where there's no initiative to defund the police and, and the board, like I said, and they are three-year contracts. So we, we have actually ratified and approved and completed the negotiations on the, the, those contracts. So I, hopefully that answers your, that question. Do you I have any other questions? I think uh, Mr. Stuto wants to ask me something. I, I just, I'm asking you, Mr. Yule, do you have any other questions or comments for public comment? I'm going to uh, leave it at that at the moment. OK, thank you. Is there anyone else here that wishes to speak during public comment? I don't see any anyone else. Mr. Gilberto. Can, can I make my comment? Mr. Studo. <laughs> so what I would say to Mr. Ewell is if you're this concerned that there are a group of people which the board is getting opinions from, residents of North Reading, um, I'm sure that Mr. Walner would be more than willing if another group came out of just, if you formed a group that said, uh, we like chocolate ice cream and somehow it would help the conversation. I'm sure he would listen because it seems like he's listening to everyone on the behest of the board. So I would say that rather than, you know, um, I get where you're coming from, but I think you'd be better off getting these group. Uh, it seems like you're alluding that there's people that feel like this besides you. I would say get something organized, contact Mr. Wal Walner outside of this, right? And, and I think you'll probably have a better discussion than having it here. And then at that point, you know, maybe that will help alleviate some of the concern that, and, and then we'll see right there if there is a big opinion in North Reading, which I, I, I don't know either way, that maybe there's a lot of people upset that we're having conversations or not. So that, that's just my thing. I think that would help rather than have it on this forum. Thank you. Okay. Madam Chair, I'd just like to comment too. Um, <laughs> just, just, on a, just on a, on a couple of points. Yeah, and, and, again, <laughs> no, and again, you know, Jeff and I have served together. We've served, you know, together. We served well together. We didn't agree on everything all the way along the way, but uh, we respectfully disagreed and we still respect one another uh, tremendously. You know, and, and Jeff, one of your comments was, you know, we should be reflecting, you know, the town's values and uh, we're not open to other opinions. You know, I, I think, quite honestly, the response of the board to that youth group that came forward is very reflective of the town values. And I think the town values as a whole, you know, uh, is would be reflective of being inclusionary, uh, mm -hmm. listening, uh, trying to educate themselves as to, you know, why people are formulating certain opinions around certain issues and you know how they've come to those conclusions and i think you know uh, mr waller's efforts to and willingness to to pull these groups together in the same room to listen to one another certainly helps facilitate what uh, would be reflective of the town's values and as far as you know not open to other opinions you don't know what they are unless you listen unless you're willing to listen and, and hear them and um, you know we, we are, there's a lot more that binds us together than separates us. And, and, and again, you know, I belong to a lot of groups and organizations um, and, you know, pledge allegiance to all certain, you know, certain groups and allegiance and things. Uh, but I don't wholeheartedly endorse everything that they all stand for, you know. So uh, I spent most of my life trying to uh, change from within rather than outside, which is the choice that I've made. In other words, you know, try and formulate public opinion. You know, I think it's the board's responsibility to listen, to hear, to be somewhat reflective. Again, we've put ourselves forward to be leaders of this community, you know, not just to reflect public opinion, but to help formulate public opinion. You know, as well as anybody, you know, we volunteer hundreds and hundreds of hours and dig into the weeds and get into the 
the specifics of the issues so that we can help educate the public to help formulate public opinion, not necessarily follow it. And sometimes we take positions that aren't popular. It might be right economically, it might be right you know, value-wise, based upon the time that we've spent researching it. We've been elected, we volunteered to put the time in to do the research that everybody else doesn't have the time for or the inclination to do. So, you know, I think it's uh, important for you to listen and for you to understand, you know, that the board unanimously endorsed this young uh, youth group's efforts and Rich's willingness to help facilitate them getting in contact with other groups of other interests, diverse interests, and coordinating it through the town boards, committees, commissions, and um, departments to help facilitate, facilitate the conversation so that we have some civility here. You know, it's certainly not coming from the top down. You know, so we need to maintain some civility here, and you're only gonna do that through communicating and listening, and I think Rich has done a great job, and I endorse that. So, you know, and as far as, you know, being attacked, you know, and, it, you know, I sympathize with Mrs. Gonzalez because, you know, after all the years I've been involved here, you know, I've been the subject matter for all sorts of uh, uh, attacks for positions that I've taken, and again, I take responsibility for what I believe in, and, um, and there's gonna be disagreement, and strong disagreement on some people, and some people handle it differently and appropriately. I mean, I've had skull and crossbone signs posted on people's lawns, you know, anti-O'Leary signs. Wow. That's okay. You know, so <laughs> if, you, if you're thin-skinned, get out of the business. Yeah. So I'm not. Don't uh, worry. <laughs> yeah, I know you're not. No, I know you're not. But I mean, <laughs> you know, I've been criticized and will continue to be criticized over the years, but I'm comfortable in the positions that I've taken. I'm more than willing to discuss them with anybody and justify my position on it. And I'm willing to listen and maybe change my mind on things too. But that can't happen unless we have the dialogue open and the uh, avenues open. And I think Mr. Walner's effort with the support of the board at this particular time, this juncture in our history is important. And I think it's, a, it's an important role that's being played here. And there's no ulterior motives, you know, and we're gonna have diverse opinions coming together and hopefully listening to one another and come to some sort of conclusions, you know, and they may not be on the same total. But I, I don't think we should, I don't think you need to be overly concerned about Mr. Walner's role as a member of the board and the board's support of outside organizations trying to enhance some dialogue and get people uh, woke. So, and again, we do need an awakening. Again, I believe that many of us have not properly recognized the injustices that have taken place over centuries, in particular the last several decades. And I think it's a, I think this is, this is a good thing. And, and I think, I think good is going to come out of it, but with it comes some pain. So all I ask you to do is be tolerant and listen and weigh in, become a participant. If I, if I may respond just quickly, I won't take up much time here. First of all, I do appreciate everything that you all do as a committee in, 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 in many things that you do. I, I think that uh, your last uh, statement there, Steve, you, know, you and I work together and we've, we've, um, uh, we've worked together well on things. Um, but that, that last say, statement, I, I, I think that America, first of all, is not a racist country. And second of all, I think that we've come a long way much further than any other nation has ever come in this regard, and we ha still have a ways to go. Just not far enough. And I know, I know you asked me to listen. Okay, I've been listening for seventy years. Okay, I come from an area. I come from a community. Uh, I've grown up with a lot of black friends and so on. So I'm very familiar with race and the impact it has had on friends of mine, and 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 the impact it has had on other people. So. That's why I'm very sensitive to what I'm experiencing here and what I'm seeing here. I think it's the wrong path, but that's that's my that's my opinion. With regard to Vincenzo, uh, 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 Mr. Studo, I'm sorry. Um, you know, I have to say that, you know, most people like myself, we really don't want to to create an organization and then create another battle. We we like to let people live and let live and do what they they want to do. So we believe in that. Okay, but we're not afraid to share our, you know, express our opinion. So, so I'll leave it there. Um, you know, I'm paying attention. There are a lot of people paying attention. Uh, we want the right thing to happen. 
I think that, uh, uh, you know, this issue about race in North Reading, as I asked before, who's the racist here, okay? I think what happened in Minnesota happened in Minnesota, and it was horrible, it was despicable, and should never have happened. It did. The law is taking care of it, okay? But now we're in a bad place because we had 40, 48 hours where everybody in America was united that that was a bad thing that happened. And then chaos broke out. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much for listening to me. And uh, again, thank you all for that. what you do. Walt, Rich, you do a lot of good stuff in town. I don't question that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yule. Thank you, Mr. Yule. Anybody else that would like to speak during public comment? This was supposed to be a short meeting, folks. <laughs> We're not even through agenda, right? We got through the-, the There's a lot going on. The Pledge of Allegiance, and that's about it. Okay, I don't see any. Do you, Mr. Yule, for it out? No. I don't see anyone in the chat room. Okay, so we can move, move along to the next order of business, which is the vote to sign the state primary warrant. Mr. Sudo, do we have a motion? Yes, we do. Madam Chair, <clears throat> I move to sign the September 1st, 2020 state primary warrant. I'll second. <laughs> A motion by Mr. Studo and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Dear Lord, I hope this doesn't, there's <laughs> no discussion about this one. Any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Just want to say, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> aye, Mrs. Gonzalez is an aye, Mr. Studo. Aye. Manupelli is aye. Unanimous. Okay. Next order of business. And Mrs. Oh, Mrs. Miss oh, Madam Clerk, waving at us. Did you want yes. to say something? Yes. I still need now to have at least three of you to come into town hall and sign that warrant. Okay. It does require original signatures. It can't be done through DocuSign or anything else. I can do so, that tomorrow. And I would a deadline for that clerk. Staff. Well, I would appreciate if you could arrange it to that among all of you who are coming in to do it on one day so we can have one date on this warrant for the signing of it and um, for it to take place sometime this week so I can get it in the hands of the constable for posting. Okay. It is, is everyone right, uh, available to go in on, is Friday, mo does Friday morning work? Yeah, Hi. I can go. Okay. I have tomorrow available. I know that. Okay. Friday oh, well, morning. By Friday, I guess, right? No? By fr I can't do it Friday morning, I don't believe. Can you do it tomorrow? I can well, do it tomorrow. I, you know, okay. I can do it tomorrow. tomorrow. I can do it tomorrow. I can do and it tomorrow. Then, Mr. Yeah. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Walney, you were waving. I don't know what day. No, I, I meant I can do tomorrow also. Yeah. Okay. So that's three for tomorrow. Mr. Studio, I don't know. I don't you know. Need a four, if you need, if you need me, I I, I can do tomorrow. I'm trying to get need all like quorum. Five. Yeah, they only need quorum. Yeah, you know. Okay. That's, you you have your quorum, all right. All right. Just, Just give me a call when you come to the front door, and we'll do it in the lobby. Yes. yes. You have to let. Is the uh, clock eight thirty two early? Pardon? Is the clock eight thirty two early or? Uh, no. <laughs> Well, we this is too late, but that's not too early. <laughs> All right, I'll be there at thirty. Uh, we have a meeting, Mr. Walner, don't we? No, that's no, we don't. Till, uh, oh, no, that's a separate meeting I have. I'm sorry. That's no. on Thursday. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. Thank you, Madam Clerk. And thank our you. Next, our next order of business is 14 Concord Street, Chapter 61A, Option to Purchase. Votes may be taken. I'm not sure we are. Oh, I'm sorry. Clerk stats? Yeah, I thought that we were going to just um, discuss the um, election oh, was... overview. I'm sorry. Madam Chair, we have an agenda item just for Number six. Of procedures for voting for the state primary. Oh, excuse me. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry. I, I didn't stay here for nothing. I <laughs> We're gonna talk. We're gonna talk turkey, but uh, something else about the election. <laughs> Go ahead, Madam Clerk. We need this actually right now, so I'm sorry for skipping over it. Well, mm. that's that's okay. I just you know I know the I I had con connectivity dis issues the last meeting, and I know Mr. O'Leary had some 
questions on the voting and we have caught up and talked a bit. Um, those mail-in cards are rolling in, I will tell you that. So, and uh, I'm sorry, your son hasn't received his ballot yet. I did check on the computer system while I was here and we haven't even entered it into the system yet. There, it is all consuming, you know, it is taking a lot of time, but I want to assure people that we're working towards it. Um, you know, we will get through this and uh, uh, they should receive their ballots, but it is taking time. There's limited, there's many steps to putting in each application into the computer system and that is the first step. We are also doing voter registration right now because that cutoff is Saturday. So we have one person just dedicated to that because that is an ongoing um, process as well and that has to be done in time for early voting. And then uh, the other two of us are doing the um, mailing cards as well as everything else of the normal business of the, the office. So we are working hard at it. We probably sent out about 2,000 ballots to date. And I'm speculating that we have probably close to maybe 1,000 more applications to enter and get out. I'm expecting that the daily amount that we receive will lower as we go forward because definitely we had received um, a bulk of them at the very beginning when the cards first got sent out. Unfortunately, at that time, we didn't even have the ballots to process and our computer system, um, which was not prepared for this till the law changed, um, was delayed in getting upgrades as well. So there were a lot of issues predating even getting the applications out. But we're working hard at it. So I don't know if any of the board members have any questions on that part of it. Madam yes. Chair. Go ahead, Mr. O'Leary. Yeah, I, I just want to ensure through the administration that you have the necessary resources to handle things on a timely basis. Also in light of the fact that there may be a delay as far as the Postal Service crossing things up. So, I mean, if you need more people, and I understand, you know, from a physical plant layout, you might have to walk an extra 40 feet to get things done, you know, but if you need more people, I don't know about the rest of the members of the board, but if we have to go for a transfer from the finance committee to get the resources to do it, it needs to be done. And again, this is your trial for, for November. My guess is it's going to be even more uh, hectic come November. Um, but, you know, to me, it's, you know, in the past, again, the volume hasn't been there, but for, you know, 13 days to pass and not even not even in the system yet, that's of concern. Not just because it's my son, but that's of concern. So what more can you do you need in order to, to do yeah. things? Unfortunately, uh, we're limited basis. because this this requires access to the state computer system, which only the three of us are trained in. And so we have to manually enter these applications in. Um, I actually counted the steps necessary to get one application in and it takes eight steps to get one application in. So it's a, just a time consuming process. It's definitely not difficult, but it takes time. So the challenge is, you know, I mean, we're dedicating our time to it and, but there is other work of the office, again, that can't be done from other people. other people be we have to do it. It, well, if they are, then they're taking our spot at the computer and we can do it faster. And it doesn't necessarily mean you can, you can pull up one person's record and it just goes in. Sometimes there's a pop-up on the screen that says, oh, this record is in conflict with something else. Another person who's not trained in knowing what we deal with couldn't be able to handle that. And as I said, they're just going to take our spot. We can do it much faster. We do have um, some election workers in right now to help us with the things that they can do to help process this, which is basically putting some labels on the mailing packets and they are organizing the cards as they come in so that we can look them up. But a lot of the cards are not filled out properly either. And so we hit roadblocks with that. And, um, you know, it's just a lot of, a lot of unforeseen uh, issues uh, based on this very new and unprecedented, you know, movement to have these this 
you know, massive mail out program. So I, you know, I have confidence we will get through it, you know, but it is taking time. You know, that is the one thing that is, is for certain. So I appreciate the support. Uh, the town administrator has uh, conveyed the same thing to me and his staff is willing to come in and help. And, you know, we will be tapping into anything we have to. Um, and I, I know that's coming for things that are not related to actually entering in the computer. Okay, Ms. Ms. Gonzalez. I, I'd just like to say, um, for people who absolutely cannot go and vote, I understand that there are plenty of people who really physically cannot do it. And, and thank God there's an option for them. But if you can physically do it, please do, because we've had a graduation in town. We've had a town meeting. We've had a special town meeting um, and done it very safely, done it exemplary, I, I feel. Um, and I feel that voting, we will do the same. It will be safe. And I really encourage you to get out there and, and go in person and take a little pressure off, off of the town hall. Okay, thank you. Mr. Studo. Um, I, to piggy, well, I'm not saying exactly what Mrs. Gonzalez says. I, I'm a big believer in plan B and C and D and E just, just to have something going. And maybe Mr. Gilberto can also get involved in this. Um, I've been following closely what the, in, in the event, Mr. O'Leary, that we can't get these things resolved, which knowing the way Washington works is, you know, I bet that it doesn't just, just, you know, just from an odds as a plan B and this week, the director of infectious disease, uh, Dr. Fauci, which everybody knows who he is, he pretty much doubled down. And mm -hmm. I quote, I think if carefully done according to the guidelines, there's no reason that I, I can see why that not being the case, talking about mail-in voting. If you go and wear a mask, if you observe the physical distancing and don't have a crowded situation, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to do that. So as a plan B, I know we haven't been pushing that, but if the science and probably the most trusted doctor in America right now thinks that we can do this correctly, should we at the very least, or maybe the Board of Health can get involved, Mr. Gilberto, this is where it kind of dovetails to you. Can we ease the fears of people that, hey, if you are really concerned about this mail-in, we are at a point now where even the most cautious doctors from the start, and, Mr. and Dr. Fauci has been, and I trust what he's been saying. I even bought his doll for my 18 month old, Dr. Fauci doll. Can we at least give like a notice or maybe talk about it in something where, you know what? If it's not as bad as we were gonna, th mail in voting is not as bad as it's going. we thought it was gonna be two months ago. And that's just based on the fact that some of the proponents of saying we should never mail in vote have now flipped their script. So I don't know, that's my question, can we, do you one here think it's a good idea to at least have a plan B that, hey, you know what, if you do have to go out and vote, do, please don't have the impression that it's almost a guarantee that you're going to come home with COVID. That's, yeah. that's my thing. Uh, okay. um, did, Mr. Gilberto, I mean, or both. Yeah. Not, we're not eliminating the, the voter in person. No. Uh, no, no, but we haven't been town, encouraging I don't, it. I don't think, I, don't, I wouldn't recommend as a town that. We're gonna, there's no way to assure, even Dr. Fauci wouldn't assure adequate, adequate safety such as that. But if there's the precautions taken, I think it, he's, he's repeat, repeated the precautions that need to be taken. But I, I don't think we need to go the extent of saying, no matter, you, you, you won't get COVID if you go vote in person. No, no, I'm not saying that, uh, uh, Madam but, Chair, but I'm saying that if you, if you look at the conversation so far, it's been that, you know, I'm just saying we finally have some science that says that that wouldn't, that wouldn't be a catastrophic idea. And to me, I think that we should do as much mail-in as possible because it's just safer. You know, it's all about, you know, elimination of risk. But if we can't for a number of reasons, I think that I don't want people to be discouraged of not doing it because all they ever hear publicly is that if you go vote in person, you might as well just go straight to Mass General right when you're done. So that I, I don't think the, um, that 
clerk stats was done she was only focusing in on the mail and i don't think we've yeah. heard her complete her presentation she was fielding questions in the middle of it which i think oh, she would be talking about the in-person voting too right <laughs> yes yes but you know well, we 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 have had a successful town election in person mm -hmm. um albeit a very very low attended one but we were prepared with precautions and we did have an indoor um, town meeting and we were prepared with precautions. You know, we are exercising those, those safeguards. And when we, and we hope, oh, excuse me, excuse me one moment, please. Uh, my husband's wondering where I am. <laughs> oh, okay. Mr. Gilberti, you also had J. Grace. Talk about a higher calling. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, she is here at 8 30 so attending this meeting mr gilberto it's a long day for her mr gilberto thank you madam chair yeah i mean the town clerk said it best i, I think it, it's difficult for any of us to say the, the different degrees of safety versus you know you know what what's safer what's not as safe but i, I do think as the clerk was it was indicating i mean we have had multiple um opportunities and, and um, chances to practice the protocols and to try to figure out what works best for keeping gatherings of people managed in an orderly fashion. And they include a town election. They include an indoor town meeting. They now also include an outdoor town meeting as well. Um, and I think that, you know, knock on wood, we have been successful um, in, in those. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that that's probably the greatest solace that we can offer the community with regard to those other options um you know those do, those other options do exist and i believe the town clerk is going to review um, the options for early voting and for um, um in-person uh, day of the primary voting as well um, those are programs that we have run in the past so they're the programs themselves are not new um, and we're applying principles that we've used in other gatherings over the past few months to those principles and i do have a a very high level of confidence in the town clerk and her staff to um, including the our, our many election workers to to provide a um, an appropriate environment given the the obstacles that we face i will just add one other note as well which is that very early on the town clerk identified that staffing in her office was going to be a concern i think it was probably two or three weeks ago at this point she uh, asked for the ability to use existing funding for bringing in existing election workers to help and she has been doing that, I believe, on a daily basis at this point in uh, a separate space that we have designated for uh, election processing in room five here in the town hall. Um, we were able to move some other staff that were there into some other areas as well to accommodate. So you know, I do want to recognize that the you know, town clerk has identified the, the need and that we've been responsive to it, um, as, along with adding the uh, availability of existing staffing as well. So Barbara, I didn't mean to jump uh, in. Oh, thank you, thank you. My think, husband was wondering where I've been. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I, uh, Clark said, as far as just, I think we need to highlight the methods of voting, um, but as far as the mail-in, that, that there are deadlines. In the last meeting, we ran a little bit over, and I know you were waiting for us, but the question arose with regard to the deadline for applying for a mail-in ballot. And if you could also just in terms of those deadlines, deadline to apply, deadline to get the, the ballot in, um, but obviously not waiting till 7.59 on election evening. We hope not. Ballot. Right, um, thank you, um, Madam Chair. The deadline to apply is on uh, Tuesday, August 26th that uh, any application has been postmarked by that day. Um, and the deadline to get a mailed ballot back to our office is election evening by 8 p.m. That is the close of the polls. Uh, we're getting a lot of calls, which also interrupts our ability to input this data. Um, a lot of people want to know, first I wanna say, there's a lot of information up on my website. Um, and the town administrator has put the banner link directly mm -hmm. to all this information on the website. As I put more information, it's going on this one page so that it's all together. So there's, there's a great deal of information that tell people how to vote, to apply for the ballots, 
Um, I just put information up there today or yesterday that will be in the transcript too on early voting, which starts Saturday and the process for that. So I really encourage people to go to the website. It will answer a lot of the questions that we're getting by phone. Where can we drop off our ballot? Ballots right now can be dropped off uh, in the treasurer's payment drop off box in front of town hall if people don't wanna mail them. So they don't have to go through the mail. You know, our building is closed to the public so we can't come down to hand take a ballot from people. Otherwise we would be even further behind. But they can utilize that drop box our own election drop box just got delivered to town hall today. And that will be probably, um, after speaking to the um, building supervisor, it should probably be uh, outside town hall by Friday. And you won't be able to miss it. It's red, red white, and blue and says ballots all over it. <laughs> so we welcome people to, to deposit their ballot there. Um, that will be, right now we're, you know, reliant on the treasurer's office to bring us the ballots, but they empty that box at least twice a day and directly bring us any ballots there. So their ballots are secure when they drop them off there. When they drop them off in the ballot deposit box, um, only our office will have access to that. And so um, I encourage people to use that. It will be up very shortly. Um, we were only able to order it after the legislation passed because prior to this newest legislation, uh, it was there was no provision to have a ballot drop box outside of the town hall. People were required if they were hand carrying the ballot to actually bring it to our counter where we would ask the person delivering the ballot to sign the outside envelope and explain their relationship to the voter because the law is very strict about who can bring back or apply for a ballot on behalf of a voter. So um, that has gone by the wayside now. So the ballot drop box was ordered immediately. Um, once we got the, the purchase order approved, which was not, not questioned at all, and it will be in place. So, but that information is up on the website. Um, the process for early voting is up on the website, the hours for early voting, the election day voting. Um, so there is a wealth of information on the website. And I really encourage people to do that rather than, I, I'm not a social media person, so I don't go on Facebook. I have no idea what's out there except what people tell me about, which I cringe sometimes. Lucky you. Um, yes, yes, and I like to keep it that way because I don't have enough hours in the day right now. And, um, but I don't want people to, to go by what he said or she said on Facebook. They should really contact our office but first go to the website. You know, we keep a very current website of information always on our, on our site. And um, I wish people would go to it more often. It seems people rely on Facebook and what their neighbors say rather than going to the source, so to speak. Okay, so, Madam Clerk, what are, the, what are the days and hours for early voting? And then if you could go with the hours and location for the election day. Day, hours, okay. and location for election. The, the, the legislation requires every municipality to hold early voting starting this Saturday for the seven consecutive days through Friday. So that means Saturday, Sunday, too. Um, the weekend hours that each municipality will, use, will run are based on their population. So for North Reading, we're required to be open for four hours, and we will be open from 9 o'clock to 1 o'clock on both Saturday and Sunday this weekend for early voting. No other business will be conducted. The town hall front doors are the doors that people should come in. The early voting this year is going to take place in the gym to allow for social distancing. Um, we, current, we used to hold it in the room next door to our office, but that is just too close for quarters. So we may not have more voting booths in the gym. We should have relatively close to the same number as in previous years, but they will be spaced out further. Um, as far as the weekday from Monday through Friday, the municipalities are to hold uh, early voting during their pre-COVID normal hours. So for us, it was Monday through Thursday from eight till four and Fridays from eight until one. So that those are the hours for early voting and it will end at one o'clock and then the next opportunity will be for people to go to the polls the following Monday um, at St. Teresa's Church Hall. 
uh, on Winter Street and uh, near 28, 62 and 28. Um, and those hours will be 7 a.m. until 8 p.m. And wearing a mask is... Yes, we, we, we are asking people to really respect that. You know, um, yeah, we, we would like to say it's required, but of course there are people that may be medically unable to wear a mask and we will have a separate voting booth for those persons so that other mask persons do not need to worry about when you're talking about taking precautions and you know, people shouldn't be afraid to come out to vote. There is plexiglass shields that will separate the workers from the voting public and masks are really stressed. We will be providing um, disposable golf pencils for marking the ballot and encourage people to bring their own black or blue inked pen only, only those colors. Red cannot be read by the tabulators, but um, a hard pencil and black and blue ink can be. And when the ballots are tested, I'm marking them with all of those devices to make sure that they're read. So rest assured that all of those devices will be read by the tabulators. Um, we will have sanitizer in the, both during early voting, we'll have some, some located um, in areas, but also at the election as we did at the town election. Um, and so, you know, people, should know that those those precautions are being taken and um, I think we operated a very safe uh, election and a town meeting recently two town meetings as you said but you know certainly the indoor venues but we also really rely on people to exercise the proper distancing and to not crowd you know their fellow voters and not um, crowd the election workers um, and just to be respectful of that. I think we're all used to that now because every store you go in, uh, certainly at the beginning, you weren't even allowed entrance, you know, if there was a maximum in your store already, and now that's pretty relaxed. But I think we all try to be mindful of people and keep distance from them. And we expect people to also do that during voting, whether it's early voting in person or election day voting in person. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Any questions? I see none. Oh, wait, Mr. Gilberto, anything else? We're all set. Thank you. Good night. Thanks for hanging around. <laughs> Thanks, Barbara. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, moving along. Next order of business is now 14 Concord Street, Chapter 61A, Option to Purchase. Um, Mr. Gilberto, with thank you. the meeting, special town meeting, thank you for all the effort in setting that up thank you to everyone that attended that um there was a not a two-thirds majority for us to move forward with acquisition of the land so um i guess where do we have a motion mr studio yes we do <laughs> and mr gilberto submitted a revised um i think you've re submitted a revised no communication with regard to that into the share folder so that would be the right. communication to be sent that we don't intend to um, exercise the option to purchase given the vote at town meeting, a uh, special town meeting. That's correct, Madam Chair. I do have a brief explanation that I'm happy to offer at whichever point you'd like. Um, I don't know if you, I'm not, <laughs> I don't know that we need to. I think it's pretty self-explanatory that town wasn't the town wasn't interested in direct directing the acquisition that was pretty clear from the special town meeting so i don't think we need to just discuss it any further so do unless the board members want to deliberate it mr studo do i have a motion yeah um do you you don't need me to read it right mike no just the motion mr studo okay. Uh, Madam Chair, I move not to exercise the town statutory option pursuant to the notice of intent to sale, sell agricultural land dated January 21st, 2020 to purchase land at 14 Concord Street to approve the notice of release and non-exercise of Chapter 61A option to purchase land and to authorize the chair to sign the notice. I have a motion by Mr. Studo. Do I have a second? No second. 
Mr. Waller, second by Mr. Waller. All right. And the release is pretty, the release is pretty self-explanatory. It, it releases, uh, it'll, it's a no notification and it's probably going to be recorded, Mr. Gilberto, um, indicating that the town is not going to exercise the option of purchase. That's my understanding. Yes, Madam right. Chair. Okay. Any further discussion? I have a motion by Mr. Studo, a second. Deck is second by Mr. Walner. Mr. Mr. O'Leary. I see Mrs. Gonzalez hand up. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Gonzalez. Because I'm I'm seeing Mr. Yule hand up, so I don't know if he's allowed to speak about that. No, we're on a motion and a vote. So we're gonna move forward with the motion uh, that's been seconded. If the member if the colleagues have any deliberation on it, but again, this is pretty we all were there at the at the lengthy special town meeting. So it's not, a, this isn't a big shocker to us. So <laughs> I'm gonna uh, call for the vote. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. And the chair is aye. So unanimous. And Mr. Gilberto, was that something I would sign on behalf of the board and then you're gonna record that? That's correct. Yes, it would. You would be signing a document, and then it would go. So it will need to be signed in person. Um, and we can have it available for you if it Friday works for you. That's fine. And then it would be um, rec uh, recorded uh, at the registry of deeds. Thank you. And th again, thank you. Thank Mr. Murphy. Thank the entire facilities. Everybody that put that together. We had a ton of. Uh, town employee volunteers that showed up to help um, getting people in and getting that whole entire uh, group registered, you know, voters registered and to their seats. That was a lot, a tremendous amount of effort. And we really appreciate how, how just how organized that was for us. So thank you. And please let everyone know thank you too. On, uh, I'm no, I don't think I'm th speaking out of turn because we were all talking about this that day, that that was just a great effort, um, putting that meet special town meeting together. So thank you. All right, our next order of business is discuss a butter request, excuse me, October town meeting. I keep skipping over. October town meeting, review the town meeting articles, discuss the town meeting date, time, and location. Are we really here already, Mr. Gilberto? <laughs> we are, Madam Chair. All right. Um, and so we have a list of articles um, that we've put in the packet. Uh, it's on page 38 of your meeting packet. Um, I'm not going to go through the, the customary articles that are on that list, unless folks would like me to. Um, the articles that I think I, I would note are, for example, um, Article 9. We do not customarily have an article to amend the fiscal year 2021 capital budget. However, due to the fact that the, uh, the board and the, at the recommendation of the, of the Capital Improvement Planning Committee had um, proceeded with a very scaled back version of the um, capital plan, um, we felt that, I, I feel it should be on there in case we make a determination that any further capital plan is gonna come forward. Um, there are not any specific ones that the committee has identified uh, as of yet, but this would certainly provide the opportunity to, uh, to do so. Um, the um, other article I would note is we do have the recurring special counsel legal expenses article on there. We have an article to appropriate money for um, the Martins Pond water treatment. Again, I do not have a funding source identified for that, but that reflects our previous discussion the last meeting. Um, funding town building repairs. We've in the past have approved $50,000 for work on town building. So we're, I have that article on the list, but have not yet identified a funding source. The establishing of a fund or an account for historical buildings um, was um, an item that was on the June town meeting warrant as a follow-up to conversation that we had with um, some folks from the Historical Society. And um, so we have it back on there again as an article uh, for which we may have, we expect to have language for the board to consider in two weeks. Um, article 14 was on the June town meeting warrant, but was taken off in the interest of expediting the meeting. And it relates to um, employees who are serving in the military. 
Article 15 was also on the June town meeting warrant funding Route 28 or Main Street study and redesign. Um, Article 16 authorizing the sale of a portion of Three Carpenter Drive. Um, we have received a, uh, a letter from a resident who is interested in purchasing um, this land. It is the town owned land that, that we are currently going through a review of for potential development for affordable housing, potentially for seniors. So I wanted to make the board aware of that. Um, we may wish to combine it with Article 17, which has been submitted by the Planning Commission and would uh, allow for the board to obtain the authority to convey the so-called Carpenter Drive property that we've been discussing for potential development for affordable housing. And uh, to give the board an update with regard to the status, um, we uh, have been working with a, a consultant and unfortunately the project has been a bit delayed due to the uh, pandemic. However, um, we are intending to have in information for book town meetings so that we can provide some level of description of what a development proposal might look like on that parcel. We will not have proposals in hand at that point. I think it would be desirable to have them, but we just are not going to make the timeline to do that. But we do expect that we'll be able to communicate to the town at town meeting what the extent of development might be on that Carpenter Drive parcel um, um, for uh, affordable housing. And uh, as you know, we have an agreement with a, a contractor to help us with that work. Um, and so we've sort of scaled back the scope just based upon some of the challenges of, of the pandemic um, to be able to look more at what the property might be able to absorb from a, um, a wastewater treatment standpoint and a size standpoint. So these are all the articles that we had as potential candidates to be on the warrant. Um, whether or not we, we wish to have a town meeting that has all of these warrants on it um, might be a separate discussion, which is the reason for the secondary agenda item being on there with regard to this, um, you know, this upcoming town meeting. As the board knows, um, we had a hearing back in January to set the town meeting date as Monday, October 8th. Um, it would customarily be an evening meeting. It would customarily be in the Performing Arts Center. Uh, due to just some uh, um, various absences in the office, including my own last week, we haven't had the opportunity to have a detailed discussion with the public safety and public health folks about the, the right forum for that. But uh, I do obviously want to make the board aware that you know, this is something that's very much coming up on the, on, on the radar. I have talked with the town clerk. Um, I know she was unable to stay with us for the duration of the meeting this evening due to other responsibilities, but um, you know, I, I think we felt that we did pull off the meeting um, it, on, on Saturday uh, the, the 8th or 9th. Um, I think there were some challenges with it, you know, in terms of managing the crowd and managing the vote as, as came up, but we were able to, to after the second, second attempt uh, to, to get the numbers nailed down, um, but, um, you know, we did, we did pull it off, but you no, know, there were challenges obviously that I think we saw and it was a wide setup that we had for the moderator. I've not spoken with him. I think he handled things very well as you indicated, Madam Chair. Um, but you know, it's not, not ideal, I think is probably the way I would describe it. So I'll leave it at that for the moment. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, I just have a, I have a question with respect to adding that Carpenter Drive parcel on a, as a warrant article. I noted in the packet that there was a letter back in the end of June. And I'm just, under, I'm trying to understand, we haven't gotten through our review of town owned properties and we haven't gotten through our review of best uses. So why would we be leaping to selling off any portion of that if we're not done with the review? And I noticed that it was addressed to me through you, but the first time I'm seeing it is in this packet this evening. So. Mm -hmm. I think it might be a little premature to include that as an article and include us taking a vote on it this evening um, when we don't, haven't even completed that review of land or potential uses for land. Um, sure, I put it on there, Madam Chair, only to make the board aware. This parcel is not like many of the other parcels that we received requests for. As you know, it was not a tax title property. Uh, we don't have the ability to simply sell it you know, at auction by virtue of um, a vote of the select board. Another alternative that we could consider based on what you've described is, um, you know, if we are at a point where we're dealing with a potential, you know, zoning issue related to the development on this parcel, which we're not proposing to take up at the October town meeting, 
we could consider this if the board wanted to at that later point in time. Um, but I, I don't know that there's any necessary urgency on our part. I, I've simply put it on there. It's more of a reminder for myself that it is an issue that if we're going to do it, it requires action at town meeting because it's not a tax title parcel. Yeah. Okay. Just, just on the, um, the map that you've provided us, did you provide the area that they're looking to purchase? Is that that T? Basically, basically, the direct access to the property is being suggested to. So I believe that the area that they're looking to acquire is along the 220 linear feet of their abutting, both the, the T and the, um, the larger parcel itself, some area in that either, you know, a straight kind of rectangular box area between the two lot lines along that 220 feet. Uh, but we don't have the detail of that. And candidly, I'm not sure that we could commit to any particular amount without knowing the impact on the developability of the parcel. Um, well, that, the I wasn't sure whether what's drawn on there, that T, is what they're suggesting that they like it to is not. So that, that's actually showing the parcel on which Carpenter Drive is <coughs> ice. Um, at this point in time, um, you notice that it's constructed only to a little bit past the driveway. Right. And then beyond that, it is not constructed. Um, I do not expect it would be constructed in that T setup. That's just the shape of the parcel that was constructed. Okay. When this right. was created. So no, I, that, that's not the area as I understand it. I, I'm expecting that the, you know, a more detailed request would be along that property line, that 220 linear feet that you see between the, behind the house um, and to the south of the larger parcel. Again, and again, this is just your suggestion as a place saver to remind you that it requires town meeting action, not necessarily. And to make the board aware as well, I didn't realize, Madam Chair, that didn't did that thought it didn't make it through to you, and I apologize for that. Um, but um, th that more is why, if we we're going to consider it, and again, I think that there are maybe questions as to which items even we want to consider at this stage, not only because of the pandemic, but because of the financial um, implications. Uh, but I did want to make sure the board was aware that this request had come in and it would require town meeting action. Yeah, and I think it's it's premature to have us even have it on the warrant when we don't even have any of the information and we do not even through with that study and we know that that parcel is specifically designated for a purpose and has been designated for quite some time for a purpose for elderly housing. So I wouldn't think that we would impede access along it at all at this point until we're done with that consideration and done with the potential development of it in that manner so hmm. but that's I'm one of five I don't know what the other members think um okay. but okay Mr. Studo I can see I just, it. uh well two questions one about the for the October meeting um uh October's weather can be you know early October can either be the best day in the world or you know it can it can get cold in a hurry and um although uh you know, some of us don't care about being outside. Like I grill in 25 degree weather, but it seems that it can be an issue. Is there, is there anything preliminary you can tell us that you think there's any way this meeting could be held inside? I mean, outside, excuse me. I mean, cause I'm just looking at it that, you know, I, I know you're going to have the discussion, but I just want to give my opinion that I, I don't see how um, this being held outside is, I mean, I, I just think the gamble's too large that this is going to get canceled. So that, that's my first question. But my second one about the plot, um, how does it work if um, you put the placeholder down, right? And I agree with uh, Madam Chair that there's just not enough information. But if we don't talk about it on the 5th and we need a town meeting, does that mean that if it actually does check out the resident, and in general, is this with anyone, that the resident would have to wait till next June meeting to get, to get it you know, voted on? Yes. Yeah, yes. I might as well. Yes. If if okay. we even decide to consider it. Okay. Well, I'm not even sure if we're at a point where we're deciding to consider it at this point. But it's oh no, I mean, but in general, that's how like for for any yeah. suggestion like this, right. if we okay. Right. Unless we call the special meeting for it, but I I don't see the board doing that for to conveyance of a portion of vacant land. That's <laughs> it's not going. Yeah, no, I it's not going anywhere. So, um. The land's not going anywhere, but we do have a designated use for it, and we do have a 
a study, an ongoing study of all of our parcels and properties we keep hearing about. So I'm not sure how, how close to the end of that study we, we are. I don't know if you have any information on that, Mr. Gilberto, but. Madam Chair, our hope is that uh, in advance of the town meeting, we'll have information about the uh, development level that the parcel could absorb based on its size and be able to provide that to town meeting so the town meeting would know what it was uh, um, approving. Um, I, I think our intention is to try to get as much of a head start on the process as we, as we could. Um, I think it, ideally we would have had the ability to, to show a, a proposal in hand from a developer with a, a specific plan, but we are not at that point from a preparation standpoint. And then candidly, it may be the board's determination that based on the information it seems, it sees ahead of the October meeting, it does not wish to even pursue seeking the authority without the specific proposal uh, from a developer. And if that's the case, then we could certainly bring that up for either a future town meeting or for June town meeting. Mr. O'Leary? Yeah, I, I just think of the, you know, including the article is premature until we have a, an idea as to, you know, exactly what could be done on the parcel. And, you know, I think as we consider that, we should consider uh, the request that's being made here so that, you know, as people look at it, you know, what does it mean with and without the requested parcel, you know, the small parcel, from, I forget how many square feet they're looking for here. Um, you know, just so that we know what the impact of any, on any future development would be and if it's significant or insignificant, you know, so if we can accommodate, I mean, just looking at it from the aerial view, they certainly could use it if they want to put a shed and a pool in there and they have difficulty doing it with a current existing lot. And if we can, you know, accommodate the request and not have an adverse impact on the future development of that parcel, we should know that. You know, or if it's going to have a significant impact on the parcel and the development of it, we should know that too, so that we can't honor the request that they've made. So as you delving into it and slicing and dicing it, put you know put it together with with and without that that requested parcel. And but I, to me, pull it off the warrant. It's too too early. Um, can I, Mr. Gilberto? So they're asking to purchase that. 10,000 square foot parcel, uh, according to the letter that's included in the packet. Am I reading that wrong? Bear with me, Madam Chair. I've just, I've lost my place in the packet. It's 10,000 square feet, map number 63, parcel 213 It's that. Basically, it, it, it's, if it's the whole parcel. Yeah, well, no, if it's along the, the 250 foot border, it'll be 250 by 40. That'll give you 10,000 square feet. So it'll be 40 feet deep into the. Oh, I see. Okay. So, there we are. so it'll be 250 feet long, oh. 40 feet deep. So, how much of an impact does that 40 feet have okay. on the developability of that parcel? That's what well, that, that should be part of the study of our town land and town facilities and things. So well, I think as we're looking at this specific parcel that they use for development, right? What is the re, you know the reduction by ten thousand square feet? How does that impact it? I think we can accommodate that. Again, I just want to make sure that the or we're just aware of the steps that would be required. And again, I uh, I, I think if you know we don't need to necessarily act on this at this town meeting and. We have the opportunity, as you, I think the members have identified, to understand the impact you know, on the developability, because I know that that's a concern. I think that's the key. I mean, I, I can't, I'd like to entertain the, the request, but I'd like to know what the impact on the value of the future development of that parcel is, what that request is going to have on it. So. And, is, and is that our building on our land that's right at this, almost the center of the T there at the end, uh, the top well, of the T? I would just caution that the alignment of the property lines is not exact, but it does appear that there may be a trespass issue ongoing on the T parcel. You're correct. That's not uh, our. Do you, do we, have we determined, I mean, if we're, ha we have this on the agenda this evening and we actually have it to a point where we're being asked to consider an acquisition and put it on a, uh, as an article on October. So, we really shouldn't be doing that unless we have all of the information available. So I'm not sure why we're even, do we have the information about whose structure or building is on that town's land? We have not surveyed out there to determine its location, but it would appear to be 
um, potentially trespassing on town owned land. Okay. All right. So I think let's discuss the articles and let's go with the with first with what we're going to include on the on the because I know that's time sensitive for us because you have deadlines and I know that that's a concern for you when this is going to get um, approved so that it can be posted and get it over to the printer etc and we we don't have <laughs> it might seem like we have eons of time but we really don't so um, can we, can we just pull it? If a citizen's petition has a timeline lapsed? It has. It was four o'clock today and we did not receive any. Okay. okay. So, and, and so this is, I, I'm, and if I can pull the members or if you, if you want to, I, I think we probably don't want to incorporate uh, the sale of, of a portion of Carpenter Drive. We simply don't have enough information for it. Um, are you in agreement, Mr. O'Leary? I am. Are you in agreement, Mr. Walner? Yes, I am. Are you in agreement, Mr. Studo? Yes. Are you in agreement, Mrs. Gonzalez? Yes. Okay, so I think we can remove that article for certain. Um, are there any other articles that, I know you did an overview for us, are there any other articles, I know you like to keep them as placeholders as well, are there any that you think we will not have ready or we will not need they won't be necessary at that October uh, town meeting because I think it, it it is important for us to keep in mind it's the pandemic just like we've been doing for these other meetings and and if we can at all shorten the articles that would be the best approach yeah, I mean I, I the items that I, I think you know, that could potentially not be acted on are the same items that were removed from that June town meeting warrant. And I think it just becomes a matter of whether we want to continue to delay discussion on those items. And we may feel that it's necessary to do so, um, you know, at this stage. So it would, I think you'd be talking about articles 13, 14, and 15 that would fall into that category. Um, I would also say, you know, our article 11 is a new article from a, as a result of our discussion a couple of weeks ago. Um, I'm told that the, it is time sensitive um, in terms of uh, the action. Article 13 would be to propose a new fund um, that does not exist at this point. Article 14 candidly is ratifying a practice that's been in place for a number of years already. Um, and article 15 is becomes a matter of, you know, how, how soon we want to begin the planning process for perhaps you know a more large scale design and construction project on Main Street. Um, and I think everyone knows that the timeliness, timeliness of that is linked to the uh, potential water and wastewater um, improvements, um, as well as you know the potential schedule for repaving of uh, 28 that the state you know we expect will look to do, not necessarily in the next couple of years, but you know in the upcoming horizon. Okay. Uh, so hopefully that provides a little more information about the articles. So the the outer date for this to be approved uh, to be printed is when, Mr. Gilberto? So we're going to ask the board to sign the warrant on, May, on on August 31st. And so that would give us sufficient time to um, mail the warrant, you know, to have the warrant printed and mailed so that it arrives two weeks ahead of time from that October 8th date that it, it's actually more than enough time it just reflects that the fact that there is a labor day holiday and the board was looking i think to meet before and after that week so the, the monday following the labor day holiday would be um it would be too late for us to, to sign it which is why we were suggesting august 31st if the board desired to meet on another date um it could probably do so as late as the thursday after labor day thursday of a labor day like, I, I may have missed it too, but you have articles on there that we haven't really discussed in great detail, um, specifically the redesign, the fund for the redesign. Sure. We, did, we did discuss in great detail the uh, Martin's Pond water treatment matter, and it was expressed that that was time sensitive. Um, so some of the other things that are on here, I did not notice anything in the packet, and for the first time they're put on here as a perspective our uh, warrant article. So 
uh, I think we would also need to be filled in on a lot more details and to just, you know, process that and ask questions of that if we had questions of that of whomever we needed to ask questions of. And I don't know that we're going to have that enough time between now and August 31st to do that. So we've customarily provided the board a list of the articles on the date that they are due, which is uh, today, and then put them into the form of a warrant that, that, get, that is reviewed with those who have submitted articles um, at the uh, succeeding uh, meeting, which would be August 31st. So um, I expect that the town planner would attend to discuss Article 15 in further detail, for example, um, that the human resources director would be in attendance to discuss Article 14 in further detail as well. And as I mentioned, if you know, we we're at that date and the board felt they wanted some more information, we do have the ability to um, defer signing the warrants um, up until the Thursday after Labor Day. So that does give us a, another week and a half or so if we needed more information. Um, but the timeline for the October town meeting often is very tight. And that's been something that we've dealt with. Um, you know, it, it, it all comes down to the religious holidays and the civic holiday on Columbus Day and trying to manage the available dates. Um, and um, it, it often is a tight timeline and we're, we're seeing that here. I guess if something made its way to you, to your attention to put on a town warrant, some information should have made its way to the board with regard to that before we're seeing it for the first time now when we're being asked to consider what should and shouldn't be on the town warrant. So uh, specifically, if the, if the fund and redesign of Route 28 made its way to you, was there any information corollary to that that we could have seen or reviewed as well? Um, so I believe we reviewed the article um, as part of our review of the June town meeting, um, but um, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna speak off the cuff and misstate the facts at this point. So yeah. I'd be happy to provide the information for the next meeting. I think it's really important. If we're looking at the same draft or are we looking at a revised draft? I think it's important for us to know what we're talking about. Okay. Um, to any other comment, input, questions with respect to the warrant articles? Mr. O'Leary. Yeah, I, I have no problem with what's been proposed other than the one we're having removed here. You know, to the other ones, you know, the Route 28 one might take a little bit of time. But the other ones, establishing the fund for historic buildings, I think that the timeliness of that is somewhat important uh, because again, we have a group of volunteers uh, who are actually proposing this, who have been supporting this for decades. And again, they're, they're aging out and they're concerned about the um, volunteer staffing to help sustain this and fundraising to, to maintain these uh, historic buildings. So. Uh, again, I don't think that's going to be a long discussion, you know, and it seems to make sense and I don't know what the dollar amount is going to be, but um, it's something that needs to be done, needs to be established. And again, I don't see this being controversial at all. Um, and the rest of it, you know, just, just the Route 28 Main Street study and redesign, that's the one that's going to be the most time consuming. The rest of them should be fairly routine, I would think. So I'm, I'm okay with it. And again, even with the Route 28 Main Street, uh, again, as far as a timing standpoint, Mr. Gilberto, um, it's, you know, to, to me, I think we need to move forward and take some, give some direction, and get some direction, and then give some direction as to what we're doing. And I don't know if the Planning Commission weighed in or not on it, but that certainly would weigh heavily with our opinion, I would think. I believe that the initial article was submitted by the Planning Commission for the right. June town meeting. It was. It was. Is there a dollar amount attended to that and the and the funding for the historical buildings? I, I uh, so for the dollar amount, I think the idea was that it would be um, a fund that um, into which funds could be contributed uh, either in a gift or some other form. There was a desire to also try to capitalize it with some um, town um, town funds as well. That there would be some um, I'll call it seed money. As well, and that's something that uh, you know, we will need to work through with uh, with the finance director um, in terms of a funding source. But that uh, that was sort of the initial need uh, or the initial description that was provided of the intention when it was presented to us by um, the historical and antiquary society folks. So again, what they're looking to do, they they're, they were anticipating, correct me if I'm wrong, and two to three thousand dollars, twenty five hundred, three thousand dollars a year needed 
to maintain the buildings and we're looking for some seed money to generate some interest that they could operate off of as well as have a fund in which the um, contributions could be put into. So, Mrs. Gonzalez? Yeah, if I could just piggyback onto Mr. O'Leary, um, that uh, these gentlemen have all this time put their own time and energy and work and you know they've they've done a great job in taking care of those buildings and and it would be it it's really important i feel to maintain them and not lose them and not have to rely on these people's generosity to do it i mean these are tremendous assets of the community that need to be maintained by the community as a whole and again we certainly welcome the assistance and we are grateful for all that they've done over the years but it's uh it's, it's, uh, it's an awful lot to be asking uh, for them to continue. Yeah. Okay. Um, Ma Madam so Chair, do you... Have any other questions? Qu questions on the articles? You're all set with those, them other than the carpenter drive. All right, Mr. Mr. Gilberto is... Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Gilberto. It's all right, Ma Madam Chair. So the dollar amount is estimated at $200,000 for that Main Street study. And that would be for a study and design. Okay. Mr. Walner, any questions, comments with respect to warrant articles? Yeah, I would just say on the um, the fund route 28 Main Street, maybe I've just been around the CPC too long, but I've, I've been aware of this has been on the docket for a long time. It, it would be good to get it done because it would tie out to the facilities master planning uh, study that's coming back with the information and would also tie out to the CPC efforts to look at economic development at the current Ocean Lot Route 2862 intersection. The uh, 28, the redesigning 28 is a, is, it's a significant part of that whole thing. So the goal is to have all those studies available to the board around the same time. So when we look at it, we can do a collective look and not try to do serial decisions, but do a master decision. Um, so I think it's, it, it's important at least for the next meeting have Danielle come and explain what that's more about. And we should give some time to that. Whether or not it makes it to the October meeting, we could decide after that, but I think we should not cross it off now. Okay, any other questions, input, all set, Mr. Walner? Yes, thank you. Um, Mr. Studo, questions or any input? Um, no, the only thing I'd say is if we, um, if this, again, back to that previous question, whatever gets decided, I think that if this gets attempted outdoors, we should probably cut it down to the bare minimum, right? And if it's indoor, then same thing, but maybe, you know, we were successful in the other one. So that's what I'd say. I'd say that, you know, I, I don't mind having the conversation, like you said, as long as we have the information in advance. However, if, if it's determined that this has to get done outside on October 5th, I think that you got to start chopping away anything that's not needed to conduct town business, like, you know, operating. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Studo. Mrs. Gonzalez, any other comment, input? Okay. Um, so that, I, I have two questions. One is, Mr. Gilberto, when is the, when is the facilities master plan going to be finished? How close is it to being finished? And are we going to have some sort of a draft to at least? I, I know we did a draft of the redesign and the, the you know surveys that were taken and all of that information. There was a lot of redlining, the thing I looked at. Might not have specifically been that, but I remember it was something way back when that was in a draft format. So we were waiting for something firm. But when when will the master facilities plan study be done? It, 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 will, be, it will be sometime because uh, the, the amount of interaction and community engagement that's required is very difficult for us to do at this point, in addition to the, um, the walkthroughs of the facilities that are required as well by the consultants. So, I mean, it has effectively been in a holding pattern for um, quite a long time. The, the scope that we had identified to proceed with um, was, was finalized right before the pandemic occurred. Um, we were not able to proceed with that scope based upon the number of restrictions that were there um, and in place. Um, I've since been, uh, I've been contacted a number of times by um, Abby Hurlbut, who's the chair of that committee, and we believe that there may be an option for a more um, refined and scaled back scope that reflects the challenges that we're experiencing for the community outreach right now. 
Uh, but there is not a timeline right now for that, in all honesty. Okay, thank you. And then to Mr. Studo's point, I know the next I, thing that we have to determine is location, time, location, um, I guess indoor, outdoor. Um, so was there any um, input by Mr. Murphy or the Board of Health with respect to that coming up in October? There, there it hasn't seems been. like it's so far away, but it really isn't. So no, we, no, you're right. You're absolutely right there. It, 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 uh, there hasn't been. Um, I guess I, 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 uh, I suggested that this be on the agenda to make everybody aware of sort of the, the fine line of what we're trying to manage right now between conducting the town's business, the appropriate form in doing so. Um, you know, I, I think that we were able to pull off the meeting. I do think that there were some challenges with, uh, with doing so outdoors. Um, I'm hopeful that, I, I know that we'll be able to all speak before the board's asked to sign the warrant, but I, I do just want to note some of the things that have come up in this conversation here, which is that, you know, the weather is very different, obviously, in October, and there are multiple risks associated with that. Um, we, there is a significant block of time in October that we will not be able to have the meeting because of the required early voting for the November presidential election as well. Um, and so that really limits our opportunities for a Saturday um, meeting. Um, an evening meeting obviously is a very challenging thing for us to do because of how early it begins to get dark. Um, and you know, we certainly have an illuminated facility um, and it does have lighting to allow for evening events, but I'm not sure that that's gonna be something that we really wanna pursue. Um, so, you know, again, due to the timing and, and, and a couple of you know, planned absences, we've not been able to, to regroup as a whole, but I do wanna make the board aware that you know, these are challenges, obviously, and I'm sure that you know that these are challenges that will be different in October than they were in August. I think it, it um, I think we could follow the same um, publication that we've been doing, which is the school property, right? Mm -hmm. And we could just say it'll be held there. We know the date. Um, I think the time is the tough, the tough thing to lock in if it's outdoor or indoor, that type of thing. But um, mm -hmm. would we be having the input at the August 31st meeting from um, Mr. Murphy with respect to that? And certainly Mr. Dr. Daly of a school with respect to that. Yes, yeah, school, school's in session at that point too. That's right. The school, you know, would be open um, for um, what I understand at this point to be a hybrid learning environment, um, and so that that may also create challenges for which facility we're able to uh, to access. So, you know, there's more conversation that needs to be had. But as you've identified, the timeline's very short, and you know, we at least wanted to sort of get the issues out there and make people aware of you know some of the challenges that we'll be dealing with for this meeting. Okay, so there really hasn't been a, to answer Mr. Studo, I don't think there's been a, a, an act, a firm decision. No, no. Uh, you know, so, I mean, it seems like, too, with the special town meeting on the Saturday morning, of course, it's in the summer, there were, it was quite a bit of people in attendance at that, quite a bit more than that were in the indoor meeting. Sure. So it was good to see that level of participation on the, on the three articles, two, two articles, really. Mr. Studo, did you have another question for Mr. Gilberto? Just could we, if for whatever reason, in, indoors can't be an option for, I don't know, you know, this, this little thing going around, you know, I heard it's a bug, stomach bug. Um, can we have it again on a Saturday morning if it, like, if it just looks, I don't know, if you're, if we're going to roll the dice on the outside, I think, you know, if that is the case, can we do that again where it's, you know, the Saturday before, which would be, I don't know, the, the October 3rd versus at night on October 5th, or was that like a one-time thing for June or July, whatever, August, whatever that was, a couple of weeks ago? So, so we have the latitude to change the team, the, the, the time, date, or location either by an act of the moderator in consultation with the select board or the board of health, or um, on the floor of a convened meeting um, by a vote um, taken as well. Um, I think our, everyone's preference would be the former because if you're able to plan for it and address it. Um, you know, in terms of the Saturday before, I, I have spoken with the town clerk with regard to the, you know, our options and, you know, that would appear to be the ideal date um, I do need to, to follow up with town council as to whether or not we can move the date to an earlier date than what was originally identified in the January hearing that the select board had. 
And uh, unfortunately, just time has not permitted that to occur at this point. But that is something she identified. The following Saturday, it happens to be a holiday weekend. I don't know that that would be a desirable date for the board, but um, it, it, you know, it, that, that is you know, something that's on the calendar. Beyond that, um, you would be looking at um, you know, the challenges of the, uh, that the election, early voting, and the staffing requirements for the town clerk's office to manage that. So we have a short window of Saturdays. And we also have the opportunity of moving it to after the election as well. Um, there are communities that have a November uh, meeting rather than one in October. Um, that may really foreclose the outdoor option if you were doing that at that point, um, but so that there is a challenge that goes with that. Um, so we, ha we have options, um, not a ton of them, but we do have options with regard to this. And those are things that we'll be looking at and uh, we, uh, you know, our intention will be to offer the board of recommendations for the best course of action possible. Um, you know, we will talk with the Board of Health as well and expect that, you know, we would get input from them. Um, you know, we have the benefit of some data, we hope, from communities that have had these indoor town meetings. And so there may be a greater comfort level with that from their perspective um, as well. Um, but, uh, you know, ultimately it'll be um, something that we'll have to decide, um, you know, by vote of the board and then it'll be in the moderator's hands. And we, we've had the benefit of holding a successful indoor one ourselves. Yes. It was just like Mr. Studo said, with a, a, a quite a modified list of warrant articles. So um, you're not, you're looking for the discussion this evening and the more firm vote at August 31st when right. we'll have more information and input and we'll be inviting Mr. Murphy to that meeting as Correct. well. Right? Anybody Correct. else want to have any input on the time, date, location? Etc. We could. I think we've talked about it enough. I think we need more information to to formulate a decision. But we've had, we've luckily had a successful indoor one, so that could be replicated. We've just had a successful outdoor special town meeting, so that could be replicated, albeit in different weather in October. We're assuming so. All right, so we'll finalize those details then with the input from everybody else on August 31st. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the intention. All right. Okay, so the next order of business is, sorry, let me get to the agenda, is on discuss a butter request to purchase a portion of town on land map 56 parcel 62 three carpenter drive which i think we we have discussed that yeah. perhaps <laughs> I think they're in we, the wrong order madam chair <laughs> you're gonna probably i read it to the right order though this time you read it the right order but perhaps they were on the agenda in the wrong order. so i think i guess we'll move pass pass on from that and we're looking for more information on that so well right. is that all right everybody we're good with that Next order of business is discuss the signed bylaw. Madam Chair, I believe that this was a request from uh, Mrs. Gonzalez at a pre previous meeting, um, just to provide some information for the community with regard to the, uh, the signed bylaw. And so um, I provided a copy of the signed bylaw in there. And uh, I just attempted to sort of highlight some areas where we often get some feedback. Um, I do not have the you know town council or the building inspector or the town planner on the call with us this evening, but I'm happy to include them for a future more detailed discussion. Um, but, you know, the things that often come up are related to um, political signs. And then there is a, you know, a fairly strict section on uh, page 47 of your packets highlighted in yellow relative to political signs and, you know, they're needing to be removed after the election. Um, there's been various determinations that have been made over the years that a political sign is not necessarily just related to an election. And so um, that's something that has, you know, often comes up and, um, you know, the, we, we see political signs, you know, some remain up, um, you know, you know, for the duration of the term of the candidate, you know, who was on the ballot. Um, you know, we get questions about that. And, um, you know, candidly, we've been advised against enforcing that provision of the zoning bylaw um, by town council, because it does have such a strong impact on, um, on, on political speech. And so that's something that I, you know, I want to highlight as part of the discussion. And I know it, it has come up in the past. It's come up with regard to some, um, you know, grassroots organizations here in town that have um, put out signage as well. And we've worked with them to 
come up to you know what I'll describe as basically a you know a, a handshake agreement, so to speak, of the size of the signs, um, um, based upon um, you know what the the bylaw identifies for a size here of the 16 square feet. But there are signs that exceed that that are out there, and I think we've seen them for in a variety of elections and some in between elections. So I, I know that that's one that comes up. Um, and I know that it's something that has been a source of difficult discussion for the Planning Commission with regard to changes to the, the sign bylaw over the years. I did speak with the town planner and she highlighted that that's an area where there's been, you know, some concern. Um, but I, I do think that there is, you know, it's, I think, it, I think it's intended, it's strict in, in order to preserve the character of the community, but it is, um, you know, there is a question as to whether or not um, our ability to enforce it without creating other, other problems. And the other area that I will highlight, you know, just in here is uh, in that same um, section of the document relative to the protection of First Amendment, Amendment rights. Um, the, um, there is a, a statement that's in there, which I, I'm not going to profess to totally understand, but re relates to um, the First Amendment as well. Uh, reading that any sign permitted under the article in lieu of any specified copy may contain any otherwise lawful non-commercial message that does not direct attraction to a business or to a service or community for sale. So that's sort of, I think that I think is intended to balance the section I just identified um, on political signs. And then the third thing I just would highlight is that, you know, we have a pretty strict sign bylaw relative to temporary signs for businesses. Um, and we, we generally are, have been very much on top of those signs. So they're sort of the sandwich boards or the, Mm -hmm. signs that are you know stuck in front of um you know what appear to be vacant or abandoned land um, they normally would be collected some of those are still being collected um, as not being compliant but there are others that are um that are promoting businesses that are opening or reopening because of the long closure so we tried to work with those businesses to allow for there to be publicity for them um, but we do understand that you know in some instances there, there's a very strict you know interpretation where those signs may not be be permitted so I think really, and you know, I'll certainly defer through you, Madam Chair, to Mrs. Gonzalez. I think the idea was just to highlight that there are some challenges with the bylaw that are out there, um, and that they may not necessarily be very easy fixes, but that it, that you know that we're aware of them. Um, you know, the Planning Commission may wish to consider offering some um, alternatives. They will not do so for the October town meeting. It would need to be for a future town meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, but that that is an avenue that has been looked at in the past. It's just been a challenge to come to agreement as to what those changes might be. So I'm going to stop there. I felt like I kind of said a lot <laughs> there, but I wanted just to sort of provide some context. And through you, Madam Chair, if it's okay, I don't know if there's anything further, Mrs. Gonzalez, that you were looking to see addressed. Uh, so I just wanted it brought to the board's attention just um, because it does kind of flirt with First Amendment rights and the right to put a sign on your property if you choose to. Um, so maybe some verbiage needs to be worked with. Mr. Waller? Yeah, I mean, this is, this is all legal, these type stuff, right? First Amendment and everything else like that. We have, we have legal counsel. Why not ask them? I mean, I think it's a lot to put on the CPC. Why not ask them to come back with best practices on how to handle this type of thing from other communities so we can decide. I think it's just, my guess is they already know what what works and what, what doesn't work, what stands up in court, what doesn't stand up in court. I want to come back with some suggestions for whatever areas we want to cover off on and mm -hmm. let's consider not reinventing the wheel. Uh, any other comment, Mr. O'Leary? I, I agree with Rich. It's a uh, Again, this is this has been bandied about over the years, sir. But again, we have we have town council that represents ninety or hundred different communities, you know. So they have uh, readily resources readily available. Uh, and, and again, to me, this is a, a CPC matter. You know, the zoning bylaws. And, you know, they're the ones who are charged with the responsibilities and of um, making suggestions, recommendations, and they have to make a recommendation to town meeting uh, in order for it to even be considered. Um, so if there's some concern or if there's concern with, you know, what the current bylaws say or how they work and it needs to be re-looked at, then to me, same thing, defer to, to legal counsel and, uh, and the CPC, you know, to 
make any suggestions. And if there's no room for suggestions because uh, the laws are too vague, or, then tell us that, you know, and then we will continue to work the way that we're working now. But you know, to me, it's legal counsel is the first stop. And again, they're a tremendous resource because they represent so many communities. And again, I don't think we need to reinvent the wheel here. Either it works somewhere or it doesn't. And uh, if it does work somewhere, show us what it does. Maybe we can make it work. Mr. Trudeau, any comment? Oh, that's that. That's. It seems like it's a as much of a legal matter as what we want to do. But um, I do agree with the idea of what Mrs. Gonzalez says that um, as long as it's not offensive or anything crazy. I mean, putting something on your property that it, it, you know and we're not talking about billboard, but like something small, like. Um, like, you know, when, when they did the defendant's just shriver, you know, that was kind of up there for the duration of whatever's going on with that 20, like, you know, something like that, as long as it's a good example, as long as it doesn't do anything wrong. But again, more importantly, to piggyback on Mr. Wallner and Mr. O'Leary, we have town council. I mean, this is an obvious question for them just cause I'm, you know, I mean, Madam chair, you might have a little bit even more insight than us because you are an attorney, but for me, you know, it's, you read the two, it seems contradictory. So getting a, an opinion would probably help me personally. So that's it. Yeah, um, once again, I'm in the minority of one here. I think the sign bylaw is fine. I think there's separate provisions for separate purposes and the political provision is really specific and clear and it's with respect to candidates running for office and ballot questions. They have to be removed within a certain period of time when that election is over. That's pretty specific. And then the other signs that you're talking about are covered under the provision on First Amendment free speech. I think these types of signed bylaws have been challenged and have been upheld if they're neutral, you know, as to content, which our signed bylaw is neutral as to content, then I think they'll, it'll be upheld as reasonable, as a reasonable zoning provision um, for a number of different purposes for our, for our town. So, um, but I'm one of five. So the other four want this to be looked at by town council and uh, hopefully town council was instrumental in preparing it and that this just wasn't created. It looks like it, it was a well-written bylaw. So um, if uh, the collective thought of the board is to have the council look it over, then that's, so be it, Mr. Gilberto. <laughs> uh, Mr. O'Leary. Don't get me wrong. It wasn't my suggestion to take a look at it. I didn't see any glaring problem with what we have and how we've been managing it. Um, so to me, if this, collectively the majority of the board wants it to be looked at again, I, I'm more in line with you, Madam Chair. I think it's, it's working fairly well. I haven't heard, you know, there's an occasional plywood signs you know, put up, whether it be for candidates or, or an issue which are, you know, outside the, the guidelines of the bylaw, which the building inspector over the years has said, hey, listen, you got to, Tone it down as far as your size, you know, not not the content, um, but sandwich board size, things like that. That's all been addressed over the years. So I mean, I don't have a particular problem with, with what we currently have. But if other members of the board do and want to take a look at it, then to me, town council is the place to go. But again, I, I'm with you. I, I don't see you opening up a can of worms or, unless there's another a new widget out there that we're well, not. <laughs> there was some wording in there that was a little crazy like that, wasn't that a widgety widge or something? <laughs> it was weird. But what sparked this for me was a conversation that just came up with between myself and Mr. Gilberto. And it pertained to those Ipswich um, River signs. And the fact that in this bylaw, those, those are not okay to have, correct? Um, Why are they not okay? No, they fall within the ambit of the First Amendment provision. Yeah, they're, they're what I understood from my conversation, they they were not, but they but it, it didn't get enforced. 
Is that correct, Mr. Gilberto? So that, that is what we have been told um, with regard to, to these, um, these items. That's what so sparked this for me. That's correct. So, and, and that's the feedback that we've been, when we've been given when we looked at it. Um, and um, I think that, you know, that creates concern and confusion in the community based upon what's written out there. Um, you know, I, this section 200-85A, protection of First Amendment rights would seem to apply to give that protection only for the signs that are allowed in the bylaw, which is, is kind of, I think, what one of the things that raises the question about how enforceable it is and what the intent is. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think that the idea of reviewing it and encouraging the Planning Commission to look at it with Town Council is probably the right step for us to take. And again, what's the intent though? Is the intent to, and again, we will use the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street as, right. a, as a specific. Well, that is, that is the. Yeah, yeah it signs all over the community right now. Yeah, that yeah, are I mean, political so, and, they're and against the bylaw. Political and First Amendment signs all over the place. Right, Thank you, right. first responders. Black Lives Matter. Which Nightmare are against the bylaw, correct? Protected Twitch River Park. A protected Twitch River. They're all over the community. And not, so, not all yeah, of them made yeah, We have a hate, hate has no home here. Hate has no home. Yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. I mean, yeah, I mean so, those, are, those all fall within the ambit of that e easy to understand provision. So if, if for some reason I wouldn't be in favor of a, an attorney tinkering with this and removing people's First Amendment. Free, that's what, that's free what I don't want. want. But you're talking commercial speech is different than the, the other types of speech. And I thought, it, I think it's a well-written bylaw, but I don't know where the sense of confusion comes from. If it's political candidates and political signs and people are saying, I have a First Amendment right to do so, that there is a provision in there with respect to election and campaign signage and things like that. So. You know, that's that's distinct. That there's a distinction made with regards to that once the election's over. But I put a cutout on myself on my lawn. You know, like a big cardboard of me, my face. That allowed. Vincenzo, my guess would be a high demand for those all over town. Okay. Me, <laughs> my face everywhere. Somebody might find it offensive. Actually, there's there's. Uh, uh, All right. Okay. I, I put the uh, I put the, <laughs> the Elm Street the Elm Street issue signs in the same category as you know hate knows has no home here Black Lives yeah. Matter and you know yeah. support your local Thank you, first responders. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So are those okay, Mr. Gilberto? I, I'm not sure that they're expressly allowed in the bylaw. I think that's where the question is coming. That's from. where the question is. And so that that's what I think we want to clarify. Okay. So <laughs> we should, the question clarify. Has, yes. I mean, the question we should has clarify that with that. the because if the town council's saying that's not allowed, you're probably gonna have a lot of people knocking and calling. So, yeah, so I, think, I think that's the that's issue, Madam Chair. Okay. That's why <laughs> but it seems like we're all saying the same thing in a different way. So if that becomes the issue, then the question becomes, and it seems like every group in town of every persuasion agrees that they want to be able to represent what they believe yeah. in. Is that something, as Mr. O'Leary said, that then the CPC gets the bylaw amended at town meeting to be much more explicit about the fact that you can put anything you want that's not offensive on your lawn? Is that how it would work? Well, good luck, good luck trying to define offensive. Absolutely. Right. Oh. That's true. That's, that's, it's that's not written to bigger. say, make sure it's not offensive, because as you could see from all the evening's dialogue, one man's... All right, then, then happy, you know what? Happy just, initiative is another man's offense. So. I'm just going to stick to my face. I'm the one. Here's my dilemma. Here's my dilemma. <laughs> it depends on what your definition of offensive is, Mr. Walner. <laughs> I, I, I think I don't think we should go down this path. <laughs> I know. I think, I think we've had enough dialogue I about this. <laughs> I think we have. Uh, I mean, I think okay. I've. Just yes, let me say one more thing. So. So right now, as we as we're reading it, as we're interpreting it, those signs are not okay as far as this bylaw. That's not how I read it at all. And I haven't I haven't got a full opinion from all. anybody on that. And again, and again, my personal opinion, not being an attorney. Yeah. It seems to fit to me, but 
again. I'm just saying. We haven't, I don't know if we specifically true. asked town council for an opinion, and I'm not so sure. But, I'm interested. I mean, I just don't. Right now, it's not getting enforced because of who's in charge of making that decision. What if someone else comes in and That's decides they are going to enforce it? The, the first I amendment. I want to make sure problem. that can't happen. Uh, I, I'm not sure who's saying that. That 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 First Amendment provision would be applicable, but again, I'm not I'm not the town's counsel, but I, I I'm certainly a lawyer. If my person was told if my client was told to take a sign down, the first thing I would do is say you have a bylaw with the First Amendment provision, and this is a First Amendment right for my client to be able to keep that sign up. But Mr. Gilberto saying that only applies to the political signs that are in the other provision, correct? Again, it's it's not clear that many no, of the signs that are up in the community are authorized under the sign bylaw. And I think that's where the question has come up. There is a, a political it's activity much, sign yeah. that's out there that's very strict and, and ties back to elections. Yes. There are other signs that are political in nature that are in town that are not tied to an election necessarily and are not removed seven days after the election occurs. And so that's where the issues have come up. In, 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 I would in agree that. with you that signs that are up, people are trying to make political, be, be, that they're a Republican sign or a Democrat sign. I would disagree that the signs that are up are political signs. And I think it's right, easy. That's they're not covered under that provision. That, and I think as we heard tonight, there's a, obviously a polarizing. This issue is a Republican issue. This is, and it isn't. And I think... I think it's pretty clear to, you know, m most people that what's a political sign and what is a First Amendment sign. But, but that having said that, you heard from the majority, and it it would be good to have council weigh in on that uh, issue. And what's what's the distinction? It, it, to me, it seems pretty clear why there were two separate provisions incorporated. Um, and I don't blur the lines. You, I think it's easy to identify what's a candidate or a ballot question sign from a free a, a, a message sign. So that's pretty easy. That's a pretty easy case to make. So, but let's go for, forth with the collective determination of the board to have town council weigh in, and then we can pick that apart if we feel like it. <laughs> I'll spend twenty thousand. Are you sure we want a formal opinion? I'm not so sure we want a formal opinion. Uh, I'm fine with the way things are right now. All right, you want to take the battle up when it happens? We'll just wait no, for. No, when it. someone's told to take this sign, I don't know. The bylaw, they have a right to appeal that. Yes. Okay. And right now, nobody's being told to take the signs down, unless of course it's too too big. Oh, and I've seen some billboard political signs too that haven't been billboard size barnyard side barnyard size political signs and they're sure like, make sure it's protected before it's challenged by okay. someone eventually let's let's clean it up housework make sure it's right so it protects everybody are you looking Leanne, are you looking to have the current bylaw enforced to no to no, some think, yeah. no opposite opposite he yeah. wants it amended so it's not like vague. It's straight like right. straight out says that you as, have the right to put whatever sign as long as it's not offensive in your yard. What's offensive? You can't <laughs> use that word. Uh, it, it's, no, it's really. I'm not gonna say that though. No, it, it, again, depending upon. You know, that you has get, to be verbatim. Take, take the forty B exactly. You know, as an example, some people are in favor of forty B, some people are not. You know, so what's offensive? Uh, the some way people might be offended at some people's of political signs that they put up. So that none of those the, none of those are are covered in that First Amendment right on that provision. Karen, aren't you happy you uh, filled in today? Oh my goodness, I know, Karen. This is what happens when we when we cross over nine thirty into ten o'clock. This is actually <laughs> it's all happens. it's all bad. Karen's I'm having a blast. No worries. <laughs> it's it's about to become more of a conversation than a formal <laughs> meeting, but we're sorry. We're it's sorry. No worries. We clearly enjoyed discussing these topics with one another. I'm not sure if we're making progress, but my, my position is I don't think we need any more clarity. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Yeah, either, I, but. I don't think we need any. I'm with you. I don't either, but. All right. So, but, so, but, but collectively, <laughs> we're, we're, uh, I don't know, Rich, where were you? Well, I mean, I've been listening to you guys, and it's kind of like you put yourself in a hole if you do get clarity. So I'm kind of thinking maybe we, should, maybe we should just let it pass and not think about it until it comes up. All right. So no opinion. So don't seek any opinion. That's three. Oh, my word. Um, don't say I didn't warn you. <laughs> the only thing I would ask is, is Michael, is that putting you in a difficult situation? I guess that's what I'm going to ask because sometimes you're in the crosshairs. I believe that we may be putting the building inspector in a position of not, not necessarily enforcing provisions of the bylaw that are on the books because of the lack of a specific authorization for sign to be up. And I'm not talking about signs for candidates for office. I'm talking about signs for initiatives that many people have been supportive of here in town that are out there that do not necessarily qualify to be left up. And I think when we looked at the signs, many of us, I think unanimously would say, yeah, that, that person should have a right to have that sign up. Right. And I, I, I don't believe that this is the first iteration where this has been discussed because in my discussions with the planner, she indicated that it's come up in the past and that there's been you know, concern about balancing the character of the community and not having it overrun with signs with um, people's First Amendment rights and how we strike yep. that balance. Yeah. And so the, the thinking would be, rather than get a legal opinion, so to speak, it would be asking the Planning Commission to look at the, the bylaw to make sure that anything I, that needs to be updated is updated. The only thing I would say about that is, I just don't, I think that's asking a lot for them to do that. I think that's really hard for them to answer that question. And so I think that's, I, I don't know how, I mean. They'll, they'll, have, they'll have the resource of counsel. Okay, so if they, yeah, that's probably would. my suggestion to them, is they should find out the answer. <laughs> it's in their purview. Yeah, okay, that's a good point. So can we agree to hand it over to them and let them discuss it? That's oh. their prerogative. That's their jurisdiction. Can I, can I ask a question about that? Because I was, I was going to be on that um, meeting tomorrow, so I'm like the liaison because I have some time to get on that one. Do um do I, I just sit there and listen or do I is this something that I bring up because we talked about it here? I, I just don't know what the like how it works. Like am I just supposed to take what they said and bring it back to us, or am I supposed to take what we also talk about and bring it back to them? This is just a general question. I think it's as the as the liaison, you're not I'm just, you're I'm, not a member of their of their commission you're not participating in the meeting but they may actually have questions or information for you to bring to the board or they may be asking you about you know is okay. there anything so that could potentially come up but it's not something they would be voting on if it's not something on their agenda and it's not something they're going to take up on a review if they don't put it on an agenda in advance so okay. but i think it depends on how they you know, if you if you're in attendance at their meeting, you're not going to be you're not vote, a voting member, and you're not going to be addressing their business unless they specifically invite you to uh, answer a question or offer some input. You know, you're a conduit between the board. In other words, if they need some assistance, they need some support, or they want want us to opine on something, you bring it back to us. Say the CPC's asked us to do this, or if they're looking for more resources and things like that, they can use you as a conduit. You know, to with the board or with the administration to to assist them, and then um, or if we take a position, if we were to take a position on this, uh, the administrator would certainly inform the planner, who would put it on the chair's table over there to put on the agenda. You know, okay. and then you would bring back that you know, there's a conundrum here. Thank you. <laughs> so. All right. So are we? So Mike, Mr. Gilberto. So it's. <laughs> <laughs> getting back to you so you you also have the option when these issues arise anyway to be able to consult with as you deem as you deem fit and so I don't I want my colleagues to understand that when Mr. Gilberto's faced with the scenario he doesn't have to get our permission and consult with that's why they're on a retainer so he can consult with them as these issues arise so um, it's not necessarily that it's going to cost us thousands and thousands of dollars on an inquiry or a review. 
Um, so if Mr. Gilberto sees that as an issue that he could actually ask the town council to weigh in on without having us tell him to. Correct, so, Madam Chair. They're not on a retainer, but they do, they do bill. Uh, I mean, our, but, yeah. But yes, we do have an open discussion with them where, you know, when an issue comes up, we, we consult with town council when there's a question that requires their input. And there have been, you know, I don't want to say numerous, but a few in the six years that I've been um, in my position where we've had to go to them and say, look, here's where it is. And, um, you know, I, I've been on the wrong side of the discussion three times, on the right side of the discussion three times, I think. Okay, this is um, going to be a tiebreaker for you? Yeah. <laughs> so um, I, I tend to take a strict interpretation to, to protect the town's interest by virtue of the, the bylaws that have been approved. Um, but obviously we want to be cognizant of people's rights and you know, we, there, there is a history with these bylaws of enforcement that we need to take into context as well. But I think from the feedback of the board, you know, some initial discussion with the, the community planning commission that they may wish to look at this would be the best step. And I think some members of the commission, um, this will be important for you, Mr. Studo, they'll know right away what the challenges were um, mm -hmm. historically and um, you know, where the lightning rod issues are. Um, and that may get us at least you know, to understand what, what direction we need to go in. And they may concur that there's really no further action required and that'll be the end of it. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you. Okay, all set. And we can move on to the next order of business. Number 12, vote to sell town-owned land. Map, which was supposed to be taken up at 8.30. Map 78, parcel 17-23, Riverside Drive. Mr. Gilberto. Madam Chair, thank you. So uh, there is a hearing notice um, that's there. Um, I, I guess it's a legal notice more than anything. I don't know whether you'd like to have it read into the record or not. I'm trying to find. <laughs> it's on page 54 of the, part of the packet. Okay. Um, it's relatively brief, actually. Um, but um, if you'd like it read, I'm happy to read it. Or if someone else wants to read it, that's fine as well. Give me one second and sure. get, get to that page. 54, right? Correct, 54. Okay, oh, it's a little, oh, it's a little tiny little legal <laughs> notice. This, it's uh, 8 6 2020 town owned land. Uh, looks like the date of publication, right? Mr. Gilberto, legal notice the select board shall be considering for sale the following parcel of town owned land on Monday, August 17, 2020 at 8.30 p.m. via remote participation. Any parties interested in the potential sale and subsequent private ownership of this parcel should plan on participating map 78 parcel 17-17B square footage is 3,740 square feet. Location is 23 Riverside Drive. And we are provided the Zoom in, internet access via Zoom and the phone access, um, one mobile and the dial-in meeting information. So there's also in the packet a letter from Stephen and Julie Carrero of 25 Riverside Drive North Reading, which was sent way back uh, in March to express their interest in acquiring the town-owned land on 23 Riverside Drive. There's also an opinion that was uh, a decision that was rendered for an approval not required plan by the Community Planning Commission, uh, April 30th, 2020, where, wherein the com Community Planning Commission voted for to zero to endorse an approval not required plan for 23 and 25 Riverside Drive. And that is on page 57. They, the, the plan that's been endorsed is on page 57 and it shows the um, subdivided uh, portions. I think that's the last page in the packet, right, Mr. Gilberto? Correct, yes, Madam Chair. And then refreshing our memory because it's been a while, were these uh, individuals before the board previously? And that's why they went through all this process because we asked them to, right? They, they have, we've met with them um, and the, the board was agreeable to selling the parcel. Uh, this is an instance where there's a single, there was a single parcel of town owned land between two single family residential parcels. The board offered the um, owners to, um, if they would, would wish to engage the services of an engineer and land surveyor to split the parcel in half 
that the board would then um, offer at auction because this is a tax title foreclosed property that we can sell by auction without going through town meeting um, to sell the parcel that abuts their property and retain ownership of the parcel that would abut the other um, residential property. Um, it really is intended to provide a buffer. We may at some point get a request from the other property owner to potentially consider selling um, 17A, which is um, the other portion here. Um, but um, the, the owner, um, the owners, Mr. and Mrs. Carrero, have engaged the services of the designer, uh, excuse me, the surveyor. Um, they went to the Planning Commission. This board, um, at a meeting earlier this year, authorized the chair to sign off on an application for the parcel to be considered for an ANR. And uh, we have the ANR plan here in my office to be recorded um, at, um, at the Registry of Deeds. Um, we've prepared a motion that I believe Mr. Studo um, has that has highlighted the terms, of the uh, conditions and the price that we believe is appropriate for this parcel, which would effectively render it usable uh, only as added land to their single family residential parcel or perhaps to build a, uh, a structure, an accessory structure, such as a shed or a garage, obviously within um, compliance of the town's zoning bylaw or with uh, whatever relief might be available through the Zoning Board of Appeals. So they would still need to go through the zoning requirements, but they could not develop it as a house lot um, um, in terms of the property itself. And that's a restriction that we put on nearly every parcel that the board's asked to authorize the sale, sale of. So all these, is that a circle one or all of them? So uh, Mr. Sudo, um, we, I believe, and I'm, I'm hopefully it's showed up in, in the uh, printing on your end, um, the, the sections that are in bold on that motion are the ones that should be read. So okay. that's numbers one, two, yep. and four. Yep. And that um, section three and five would not need to be included based on okay. our recommendation. Mr. Gilbert, I have a question for you. Actually, I have two questions for you. Um, there, the southerly portion of those lots, uh, the Ipswich River borders on the southerly portions <laughs> of those lots. So um, the, the motion would contain a provision that would require them if they're, wherever they, depending on where they're locating a structure, if they even do that to obtain conservation commission approval, if it, it's near at or near or within the vicinity of the Ipswich River. So we've not customarily included um, a description of the requirements that exist under either our zoning or wetlands bylaw. If the board wished to ask, add that motion, um, that language to the motion, we could do so to make sure that they are well aware of their requirements. Uh, but this motion does not waive any of those requirements that are in place. Um, but if you felt it would be more suitable to, to specifically stipulate that, I think we could do that. Yeah, I think that's important. And then my next question for you is, we've heard about this with respect to the Elm Street proposed 40B, where um, it's the GLAM calculation is based on town owned land and that let's say, for example, there's further development after that time frame, um, it doesn't impact the calculation or a, a, another low income came in after that time frame, it doesn't impact the GLAM calculation because it's based upon the property that the town owns at the time that that, that application was made. Does the reverse hold true as well where we're divesting ourselves of a portion of land that was presumably included in that GLAM calculation. Is this going to reduce the, the not amount of the city's land in the GLAM calculation or does do they just still consider what it was at the time? So uh, my understanding is that what is considered is the calculation at the time that the parcel was uh, at the time excuse me that the application was submitted, which would have been in July of 2019. However, if a subsequent application were to come through, um, that reduction would be accounted for um, in, the, uh, in the calculation. Okay, so it would just reduce it by that 3,000 or so square feet? That's correct, yes. Okay, all right. So then it, then it would reduce that, but not for the current application that's in. That, that is my understanding um, um, with regard to the discussions I've had with town council, but I, I will be candid, I've not asked that specific question with regard to this specific sale. And so if you know the board wishes to have a firmer answer on that, I would like the opportunity to ask that question.
Fine. I don't know what's the what's the board's. I mean, I, the re, and the reason we brought it forth is because in in previous discussion, my my impression was that we didn't want to commingle the two issues, and I, I understand that, but I don't want to try to give a legal opinion that I, I haven't asked for specifically yeah. for this issue. So I mean, it, it's been you know honestly more than a year since they expressed interest. I think a two right, week, right. two week continuance to get that answer was not would not be, I don't think, unreasonable. Okay. Would would that be all right with my colleagues? I, I would just be concerned if that somehow made it made a an impact or had an impact. But I don't know what the, my, my colleagues think. What do you think, Mr. O'Leary? I would hope that four thousand square feet doesn't impact our uh, our ability to lay claim to what we're claiming to on the forty B application. Um, you know, just in relation to this specific one, these people came before us you know, well over a year ago, we agreed to uh, have it separated so that they could get it again. I believe their driveway is encroaching on the town owned land anyway already. They can't get the, their cars in the yard without acquiring the property anyway. And this also um, achieves the um, recommendation that was given to the board to retain access to the river uh, by keeping half of it. Um, and if this is, a, if this is gonna be a concern, looking forward, I mean, are we not going to be considering sale of town owned land to anybody for any purpose just to stop a 40B? To me, I don't think that's good policy either. Uh, but so to me, I, I, I'm fine with, with this application. I'm fine with the, the process that they've gone through. Um, the CPC has endorsed it. You know, I, I say just move forward. And as far as your other comment, Madam Chair, in relation to um, including a stipulation in relation to compliance with other um, zoning or wetlands bylaws is, is unnecessary or redundant because they're going to have to do that anyway, depending upon, if they don't want to do anything, they don't have to do it. If they're going to put a, a structure on there, they're going to be compelled to comply with the Wetlands Protection Act and uh, any zoning bylaws we have anyway. So I don't think, it, I don't think we should get in the habit of putting that in as one of the requirements of, on our laundry list. <laughs> of uh, things to choose from because they're gonna it's always it. easier to put it in the motion and ahead of time so that there's a sort of acknowledgement of it and that's i think that's i think it's where it's almost incumbent upon us to include that in the motion but okay i respectfully disagree i just don't think it's necessary and again people who live on the river and live in these small lots they're more than familiar with what i look you know so anytime they went to try and do anything to their home they've had to go through the process anyway mm -hmm. uh, um, All right, any questions or Mr. Yeah. comments? Or oh, I'll set Mr. Walner. Yeah, I don't think I have any particular comments. Um, okay. um, yeah. Mr. Mrs. Gonzalez? I, I, I think I would just like to go ahead and, and okay this. Vote, vote on it. Mr. Yeah. Studo? Um, I mean, I, it doesn't it doesn't seem like the 3,500 square feet should make a difference, although I would hate if it did. So for that, because I know how hard the town has worked and what it's costing us, I mean, I'd err on the side of caution and as dumb as it is, I just feel like I've seen too many instances where something that was just thought of as an afterthought, like, because I agree 3,500 square feet doesn't mean a lot, but Wow, would that be a terrible thing if we just lost out by like a couple thousand square feet because of this? And I, I don't know if that's the case, but I'd rather get a, I'd rather get a more solid answer. I, I'm gonna go with that too. He just convinced me. <laughs> okay, Mr. Gilberto. And I would add that I mean, this may be a case. If not now, then in the future, every square foot will matter. Um, okay. it, it is that close. All right. And again, I, I, I you know the discussions we've had relative to when the line is drawn, date back to the application, but you know, to the specific question that's coming up, I, you know, I think it would be advantageous for us to have that answer. I just want to make sure that it's on, it's, it's the, re, the, re, the reverse is true otherwise. So that's why I thought to ask you that. And um, I wish I thought to ask you that this afternoon, you might've been able to get us an answer, but 
I don't know that there's an issue with us. I mean, we could take a motion, but I don't know that there's an issue with us delaying the vote until August 31st, is there? No, I, I don't expect that there is at all. All right. Um, so uh, what's the pleasure of the board? That's Chief? fine. Coming up the 31st, that's good. That's fine. okay. Um, and you have a sense of what the question is, right, Mr. Gilberto? Because we also have a sense that, you know, they 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 may come back and forth on that. And so we want to make sure that we're protecting it. Like Mr. Walner said, I mean, Mr. Studo said, we really, the town's really worked hard with respect to that. So we want to be sure. Can I, I ask a question? Okay. So... Madam Chair, can I ask a question? This is Maureen. Oh, okay. I don't know who that is. You're not coming across my screen. So, Mrs. Uh, Doherty, I'm, that's I'm just on the, on the telephone. Um, where this is so close with the square footage, um, but this couple needs to encroach on the townhome land just to park their cars. Could the could the, they get an, an easement from the town just to be able to park their car without illegally crossing into the town owned land and, and then the town still retains ownership of the square footage that won't affect adversely this the 40B argument? I don't think that's how it was published or posted or that wasn't really the direction that, that they were no, I I understand that's not the way it was posted, but I'm just thinking from two weeks from now, is, is that is that? I mean, I don't know if this family is still on the call, um, you know, because this this is going to be brought up originally at eight thirty, but um, it's just a different way of looking at it um, on August thirty first. I mean, we we've, we've been previously told that the board retains the ability to sell all or a portion of a tax title foreclosure property based on direction that they were given um, a few months ago, the, the property owners have paid to have the plan drawn up here to, to show this division of the property line, you know, basically splitting the lot in half. And I believe that was feedback that they were given by, to the board um, back in <laughs> February at this point. Um, so, you know, there, there would be an additional effort required if there was gonna be an easement, Madam Chair, obviously you're familiar that there would need to be, you know, it would need to be drawn onto a plan and it would be at someone's expense to do so. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. I think we should just, I, we, we don't really have it. We can't really answer that question. So it would be, be kind of have a, to go back to the drawing board, literally and figuratively, if, if the board, you know, just, if the board hears something different with respect to the square footage and the impact on the GLAM calculation, but. So but we'll, we'll, we're going to need to we're going to need to wait to hear back on that, and then I think that informs our vote at that point. So, Mr. Mr. O'Leary. Yeah, I, I think as uh, the town administrator is consulting with town council regarding this, the question can be raised. You know, what would it take to grant an easement, allowing access, and potentially a, a structure on the easement? Right, and then and then perhaps doing that in a in a um, temporary fashion, which is probably what Mrs. Doherty suggests suggestion <laughs> in a temporary fashion until the other matter resolves itself. If it's going to have that significant of an impact, I mean, we we have other methods to, um, I guess, assisting the family with with its need. But I don't think anyone's kicking them out of the access to their house at this point either so that was made pretty clear that no one's coming in and forcing uh, trespass on town land so i think we have that all over have an offensive side. what's that <laughs> offensive side. oh boy all right let's let's move on so we'll make will that give you enough time to hear back on August 31st? Okay. I believe so, Madam Chair, yes. Thank you, all right. Mm -hmm. Next order of business um, is the COVID-19. Madam Chair, could we vote to continue this hearing, if you would, to- Oh, uh, I'm sorry, yes. To August, to August 31st? 31st? Okay. And I suggest 8 p.m. 
Okay. Do I have a motion to continue the public hearing on the sale of town-owned land map 78 parcel 17 to 23 Riverside Drive? Madam Chair, uh, we have a motion to continue motion the hearing. Mr. Studo. Do I have a second? I was, I was trying to figure out if I had to remember. <laughs> Just say I, I make second. I have a motion by Mr. Studo and a second by Mrs. Gonzalez. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. There is aye. <clears throat> All right, now we can have our next order of business, which is a COVID. Did you say that just to avoid the COVID-19 update, Mr. Gilberto? <laughs> we we're gonna get to it anyway, so. Yes. Um, Madam Chair, just a, a couple of pieces of information you know, for the community. Uh, the first is that uh, those who have been following along are aware that um, the public health nurse, Pam Bath, um, she had notified us of her intention to step down from the position and just uh, to focus on her responsibilities as a Board of Health member, uh, effective at the very beginning of August. She has been helping us through a transition and we had identified a candidate who was helping us temporarily. Um, unfortunately, that candidate uh, had opted not to uh, take the position on a, a permanent basis um, uh, today. Um, so we had had some back and forth and we're optimistic that things would work out, but uh, that they didn't. Um, and so this evening I did speak with uh, Ms. Bath um, and she, uh, has been agreeable to remaining uh, with us um, as needed uh, for the next four weeks while we uh, ramp back up our search for a successor for the position, um, focusing on advertising the position at the increased hours to 24 hours per week, and the position being a benefit eligible position, which we think may help to attract candidates um, moving forward. And we're gonna really focus on the outreach during that time. So um, for folks who may engage in a conversation with the Board of Health and hear from Pam Vath in her capacity, um, as public health nurse, that's why. Um, and she uh, you know, has been helping us along during this transition and, and will resume her responsibilities, monitoring things for us um, for the next four weeks while we ramp up that recruitment effort. Um, and I wanna thank Pam for her, uh, her efforts. As I said many times before, when she agreed to step in to help us when Ms. Um, Swansburg left uh, two years ago now, um, you know, I don't believe that, that anyone expected that this would be the situation that we are in and so, um, you know, she's been, um, you know, very helpful and I really appreciate her, uh, her assistance and her work, not only from a clinical standpoint, but from a data management standpoint. So in line with that, with regard to the data management, I do have an, an update that I received this evening relative to our caseload. I will note, as has been the case all along, these numbers will differ from what you see in the statewide reporting on Wednesdays. Um, for whatever reason, our numbers never seem to exactly match up. So what you're hearing is coming from the state's public health data network that we log into through our Department of Public Health, um, reported to me by the, um, the nurse, the public health nurse. A significant change that I'm advised occurred beginning last week is that the state is now classifying probable cases as actual cases in the data. So you do see that there will be an increase in the numbers that are here, but it is attributed, um, you know, it is partially attributed to that. Um, so our total census of cases is 226 cases um, excuse me, and that's uh, broken down um, between the nursing home at 63 cases and 163 cases of general population residents. Um, the number of deaths is uh, unchanged at this point. Uh, it's 12 in the nursing home, one confirmed not in the nursing home, and then there was one suspected death very early on that is not classified in the, uh, in the totals, um, uh, uh, in the numbers. Um, we have 195 residents who recovered from COVID-19 during that time, and we have 17 that we're monitoring um, for um, um, infection at this point. Um, I will note a couple of things that have happened since our last discussion. The, the first is that there was a, a case of, um, that, that there were um, cases associated with international travel um, that are included in, um, in uh, our numbers here. Um, and there are three, three of whom were confirmed positive and four who are close contacts um, as well. So um, that's something that we've been assisted with uh, with the State Department of Public Health. And as I understand, it's something that was identified by routine testing as well um, upon their return from international travel. Um, the other thing that I'll identify is that we did have um, a, a positive um, case that we were notified of a, uh, a patron 
who um, visited the food pantry in its new location. And that resulted in the food pantry being um, closed for cleaning today. Um, that individual also traveled on our senior van um, bus. Um, and so we also cleaned and sanitized um, the bus. And any, any of the individuals who were in close contract, contact with that person, um, they're being addressed through the existing protocols that we have in, uh, in place as well. So if so anybody noticed any disruption in service from the food pantry, that's, uh, that's why. Um, so again, this is kind of hot off the press this evening, especially the, the last part of that here. Um, you know, we continue to monitor the caseload. Um, you know, we were, it was being done in a shared effort with who we hoped would be the incoming public health nurse. I will tell you we're not unique in terms of the challenge of hiring a public health nurse. If you go to the MMA website, there's a lengthy listing of vacancies that are out there. Um, there is plenty of clinical work that's available for anybody with the nursing licensure. Um, and so it's a matter of finding the right fit and we're gonna ramp up uh, our efforts to find that right person for us moving forward. And again, I, I can't express enough our appreciation to Ms. Vath for uh, her assistance, um, as well as the work of the board itself led by Chairman Hunt um, and uh, a member Karen um, Martin, um, as well as um, Director Bob Racy um, and um, Administrative Assistant Stephanie Conley as well. So I know that's kind of a lengthy update uh, verbally, and I know we normally are putting those out in a written a written update, but you know I didn't time did not afford that to occur this evening. I wanted to you know, provide the update for the community here um, as well. Um, I'm happy to answer questions. Yes. Mr. O'Leary. Uh, I'm sorry, maybe I missed it. Uh, what about the an occurrence at a local church too? It was a, a notification that we got through an email. Yeah. Uh, so there, there was notification and, and I'm not sure whether that is something that occurred with a non-resident or what, but our we received secondary notification of, of that, uh, meaning we found out from the email that you're describing. And I don't, I don't have a full report on that, but there was a, a report that was out there that was released by a, a local church. And I know that um, there was work being done through contact tracing, but I do not, I believe that was being handled through the state's contact, con, contact tracing program and not by, um, the, by the, uh, the town. So you may know very early on, we were responsible for making all the phone calls required, were, were, were associated with any case. And maybe a month into the pandemic, the state stood up a pretty robust contact tracing operation that has been involved um, here. Um, so I don't have a full report on the outcome of that investigation because I, again, I, we weren't handling that one firsthand, um, but we are aware of it. And just for the public's edification, if there is anyone else still listening in, it was the four o'clock mass at St. Teresa's that the individual had attended. But I don't know that that was a resident. It could have been a, a you know, someone from somewhere else. And it was um, in the hall. It wasn't in the actual church. It was in the hall. Right. St. Teresa's church. Yeah. Um, Ms. Anyone have any other questions for Mr. Gilberto? I didn't. Ms. Are you all set, Mr. Were you all? I just okay. wanted to just follow up in relation to uh, uh, we just started putting the, the van back into service, correct? The senior, senior van transportation? Yes. Um, is that going to be, you sanitize it, is it going to be curtailed? Are we going to have resources of people just drive it? How, you know, um, is, the, no. is the food pantry going to be reopened? I mean, it just, just opened and, uh, and now they had to shut down. Are they going to be reopened so that people can go to the food pantry? Is the CDC My understanding is providing that transportation, not providing transportation? What's the timeline? So we're not intending to suspend the transportation. There may be a disruption based upon driver availability that we'll need to attend to, but we, uh, we hopefully we'll be able to pursue a backup for the uh, driving um, for the van. In terms of the pantry itself, I, I know that they were trying to move to in-person visits. Um, they may need to move back to the uh, place and order um, in writing in advance and have it picked inside and brought to the door for a curbside type, type pickup. Um, I'm not sure that, that a plan on that has been finalized yet, but I know the public health nurse is working with them on that as well. Um, but I'm, the, other than the closure today, I, I don't know whether they're going to open for an alternate date this week or not. I, that I have not heard. Okay. I, um, I, but I also just want to acknowledge that, you know, they've been doing a fine job under the circumstances and yeah. uh, delivering services to the people in need here. And you know, this is just an unfortunate setback. Um, but the public needs to be conscious that, you know, it's still here, it's still in our community, it's, it's still everywhere, and we need to be uh, cognizant of 
it can strike anywhere. So mm-hmm. whether it be in a church service or in a senior center van at the food pantry or, or other places. So um, continue to wear your mask, protect yourself, protect others, and uh, be diligent, be cautious, and be patient. Okay, Ms. Gonzalez? Yeah, can, um, Mr. Gilberto, can you clarify more on probable cases being counted? How, when did that start and what do they consider a probable case? Um, so it, it's something that has been evolving since the very beginning of this. Initially, probable cases, initially confirmed cases were first probable cases and then became confirmed cases. And then from what I understand, probable cases were for a period of time never becoming confirmed cases. And now, as I understand it, beginning next, last week, cases that were that are identified, that identified as probable are now being treated as confirmed. As to the reason that that's been changing, I can't profess to know it firsthand, other than I'm told by the public health nurse that there was a change in, in this reporting that occurred um, last week. And you may remember that beginning in, I think, July, we were reporting, I think, seven probable cases um, you know, all along, and they, those cases, you know, they were not changing in status. Not, you know, the passage of time was not causing them to become confirmed cases for whatever reason. Um, we also has, have a, a death that is a suspected death that, as we understand it, will never yeah. be confirmed. So it just, it just doesn't give me, I don't feel like the count is accurate. If you're, it just doesn't seem accurate to me to, to put in probable cases. So. Are we concerned that being understated, overstated? I mean, you've got 115, approximately 115,000 cases in Massachusetts and 85,000 deaths. 86, How many 8,600 deaths. You know, you've got 5.4 million cases across the country and 170,000 deaths. You know, so if you equivalent it over seven here and eight there, it doesn't remove the fact that you oh. still have a problem here. And then we've got situations across the country where Colleges are opening up and closing back down. You know, schools are opening up and closing back down. You know, classrooms are going into, into place there and a thousand students and teachers get quarantined. So, so all right. the numbers. I'm too tired. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Mr. Mr. Walner, do you have any questions about the update? Mr. Studo, do you have any questions about the update? No. Mr. I have to, I do have a comment, but I can see your hand up. You really want to add more to this, Mr. Gilberto? Only that I'm told that the number of probable cases included in that number of 226 total is nine. So I just thought I would offer that so that you're aware of what, what the numbers we're talking about. Thank you. I want to make a, just a quick um, comment for the public's edification. We did receive a notice from a gentleman who's a resident who wanted this board to meet and vote with respect to the school's um, plan moving forward to go to a hybrid cohort, you know, um, partially attending in person and partially. Mm -hmm. And this um, individual wanted us to vote to order the school to insist that the children be returned to full, you know, full school. And I don't know that the, that we are all here and we are all attending multiple meetings of multiple boards, commissions, conferences, talking with the Mr. Gilberto. Some of us are meeting in these conferences and meetings and hearing from uh, superintendent daily and, and the school committee and, uh, Chairperson Buckley, I think it, just as a matter of edification that these are decisions that aren't made on a whim, just like it wasn't our, we didn't just decide to have a special town meeting on Saturday. These are decisions that are consuming hours upon hours upon hours of the school committees and Dr. Daly's time, the town administrator's time, and there are other things these people could be doing with their time, just like there are other things we could be doing at 1030 at night, other than talking about these things. These are hours of meetings, conferences, webinars. DESE, uh, the Department of uh, um, Elementary and Secondary Education makes these decisions. And these aren't just 
formulated on a whim by individuals that are responsible for making these decisions in our town. The Board of Health gives input. So I think just as for general edification purposes, these, these took months and months and months and months, just like our, our meetings took months of discussions and planning to figure out how we were gonna do this in a safe manner. So I also think that, that it's potentially a fluid circumstance, but the plan that was set forth was approved by DESE and moved forward because of all the thought and input and considerations and things like that that the superintendent and the school committee and the teachers and the administrators have the best interests of the kids at heart. They themselves wouldn't want to get the COVID-19 and they would not want the kids to get COVID-19. But at the same time, other than a resolve, we can't vote to order them to do anything and they have to comply with what guidance is presented and also with under the auspices and authority of DESE in terms of how they move forward. And I don't know if there's anything else you want to add to that, Mr. Gilberto. But no, I think that was well stated, Madam Chair. I, I think it's important for people to understand. These are hours and hours and hours and hours of planning, meeting, information, getting, gaining information, asking health officials to weigh in. So mm -hmm. it's not just something that's done, you know, quickly. It hasn't been. All right. So anything else? We're all set and we can move on to the next order of business, which is your your report, right, Mr. Gilberto? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Um, and so, you know, the I, I did not submit a written report. The only, you know, thing I, I just want to bring up is just to make sure the board members are, are, are aware relates to um, the special town meeting in Concord Street. So, um, we had initially received an inquiry from Mr. Coviello that uh, he would be potentially submitting a zoning uh, bylaw amendment to be considered at the October town meeting. He subsequently has reached out to the town planner and said that he felt, um, you know, that I think that it would be rushed to try to do that at this point. And so um, I believe we should expect a, a, a citizen's petition of some sort for the zoning change that I believe he's contemplating for this parcel um, for a future town meeting. I'm assuming it would be June or you know, if there's an earlier meeting than that, potentially then. Um, and the only other thing is, and, and I know um, the board, you know, the board considered this already, but I do want the board members to be aware that under the statute, technically what happens is if we don't vote to take, we don't, if we didn't take the vote earlier to non, not exercise the option, the town's ability would remain open basically through the public health emergency and then 90 days beyond that as well, as we're well aware of the timeline. I'm under the impression from the board members that there was not a desire to reconsider this uh, this action um, at a future town meeting, um, you know, for in terms of trying to acquire the property based on the outcome that occurred at the, the Saturday town meeting. I know that we kind of quickly took up that item, but I didn't want to let the meeting close without making sure the board members are at least aware of that. I, my understanding is the intention was to give the Magliozzi's an answer, meaning are we going to buy it or are we not, so that they could move on with their life. Um, we've done that by virtue of the town meeting um, and the board has taken the requisite vote earlier this evening. But I do want to make sure the board members are aware that, you know, taking that action was not something that was required to occur under the statute. If you didn't take that action, the timeline would continue to run and the Magliosis would not be able to sell their property. Thank so, you. Thank you for allowing me to offer that explanation, Madam Chair. Yeah, um, I don't, I don't know that there was any, I mean, I think it was fairly, it was pretty obvious. Um, Though we had a great attendance at that meeting, um, it, it just was pretty obvious that it wasn't an overwhelming desire to acquire it and certainly didn't make the two thirds vote that was clearly published. So we discussed it, we published it, we had the virtual meeting in advance. So all of this information was well known and well published. And, you know, again, not something we just decided on a whim to have a special town meeting. It was months and months into the making of this. Absolutely. And someone did ask about something about the timeline and, and that sort of thing. But we did have a little thing called the COVID-19 pandemic in the interim. So that sort of set us on a different trajectory for a bit, but, um, I don't know that anyone would want to reconsider that. I don't know what Mr. O'Leary, 
you know, Mr. O'Leary's is. No, it doesn't. No, as, as far as I'm concerned, you know, I, I think I think this is the right thing to do. In other words, we expressed our interest mm -hmm. at our special town meeting. Uh, we achieved a majority, not the necessary two thirds. Um, so for some of us, that's you know unfortunate, but it's a matter of fact. And uh, to me, and again, that's why I was pressing, you know, have the special town meeting sooner rather than later so that the Magliosis would have some sort of closure in relation to the town's position on it and they could move on. That's, mm -hmm. that's the fair thing to do. You know, mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm fine. Mr. Gonzalez, all set? Yeah. I the same. I mean, it was, if it was close, maybe I would rethink it, but it wasn't. Yeah. And sim simply not enough uh, individuals interested in the town acquiring it. You know, Mr. Walner already wasn't in favor of acquisition. So, you know, it's nothing more to say on it, right? right. You're not going to reconsider it. Mr. Studo? Yeah, no. All right. So, anything else, Mr. Gilberto? Yes, well, thank you, Madam Chair. If something went smooth. <laughs> Um, <laughs> board member report. I mean, uh, old and new business. Mr. O'Leary. Uh, again, just want to mention the passing of a couple of um, longtime residents of North Running who are uh, great contributors. Uh, Mr. Francis Heckman, uh, probably here 60 years plus, former member of the school committee, um, again, one of the early members of the Citizen Scholarship Foundation, and in addition to that, volunteers and a lot of other uh, activities within the community, uh, raised his children here and uh, just a fine gentleman, wonderful guy, uh, lived to the age of 96, so good for him, and we were fortunate to have him for so long, and a, a wonderful man. The other one was uh, Tony Terezi, some of you may have known him, uh, not too recent past. Again, he was heading up the Citizen Scholarship Foundation every year, coming before the board, you know, making the pitch for contributions. Uh, also, um, very active uh, coach in youth sports uh, for his two daughters, and um, and he was the branch manager over at uh, Citizens Bank, and prior to that, ran uh, credit unions in, some, uh, in the financial services industry. And again, great member of the uh, community, and died at a young age of 68 years old. And it's unfortunate, but uh, wonderful guy. We're happy to have him as a member of the community. And thoughts and prayers to uh, Jerry and his daughters. It's all, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Oler and Mrs. Gonzalez. I have nothing. Okay, Mr. Waller. I'll just say thank you to the board for uh, your support tonight. I appreciated your collective uh, words. Um, we certainly don't have to agree about everything, but I do appreciate your support. And you know, Miss um, Gonzalez, you said there were, you said something about things you experienced from, and I'm happy to hear that. I didn't hear you when you said it today, but I'd be happy to. For anybody who has any concerns about anything I'm doing, always happy to talk about it. So I wouldn't. Sure. Happy to engage with anybody on anything, including town members. All right, Ms. Mr. Studo. I got nothing left. Uh, <laughs> I know it's ten thirty-six. I've talked enough. Do what I? Are, what are the cutouts coming? What's that? After we get the opinion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, what? What was that? I didn't hear. So we're getting the Vincenzo cutouts. Oh. <laughs> Listen, I'll. I'll challenge anyone that tells me it's an unlawful sign. <laughs> <laughs> Cutouts, yeah. Right. Even if it does, even if some people do find it offensive. <laughs> <laughs> what can Who I do? Find that offensive. <laughs> All right. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Because Mr. Gilberto's already asleep over there. Motion so to adjourn. I'm oh, second that. Mr. Studo. The motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mrs. O'Leary. Uh, Mr. O'Leary. Um, Mr. O'Leary. I. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Here is I. Thank you so much, Karen. Thank you. Thank you again for having me. Everybody have a nice night.